Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Keeping Candles Mysterious. We are Lawful Stupid RPG, and we are thrilled to have you join us while we play some of the Candlekeep Mysteries module, with a few additions sprinkled in. My name is Buddy, and I'm helming this adventure while our normal Saturday night game, Cold Hard Witch, is on hiatus. Let's see who we have tonight, shall we? Tonight we have Ben, playing Sledge, the Seder Chronergy Wizard. Amy, playing Riala, the Asmar Life Cleric. Z playing Raven, the Elf Mercy Monk. Panda playing Aerith, the Elf Psy Warrior Fighter. And Grindy playing Gen, the Elf Soul Knife Rogue. Narcissus's player, Narcissus's player is feeling under the weather at the moment and will not be joining us. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Oh, and yay. see, that name is not easy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of S's in that name. Uh, I messed it up literally every time I said it last stream. Every time it was different. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like some of that's on purpose, though. Uh, and you're consistent in your inconsistency. <laughs> absolutely. Is everyone ready to get into this adventure? Yes. Are you? Ooh. Yeah, you know I am. I uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Hi. Last week, our party continued their short rest while discussing the problems at hand, how to enter the book, and how to cure its prisoner Quill. After spending some quality cardio time, Sledge summoned his owl familiar Absraham. <laughs> They then proceeded to uh, continue talking about whether they should consider opening the book or not. Finally making the decision to open the book, it turned out to be a play. Not to be deterred by free information, they skipped right over all the text and discovered the secret command phrase to open the portal into the Demiplane prison. Once inside, they found a quaint little village called Wisteria Vale and began chatting with some of the locals. Uh, strange sounds and weather patterns would appear and disappear suddenly, and they saw the familiar red robes of a candlekeep custodian. They followed him into the forest, only find more, only to find more familiar faces of the candlekeep assault force. After dealing with two of them, Narcissus disguised herself as one of the attackers and entered the camp to gather more information. Now, unfortunately, with her not being here, I will, I will step in for her and and hope to not get everyone killed. But that's kind of my job. <laughs> Uh, so when last we left, she, uh, Narcissus had, had, had put down the ruse on, uh, on, on the, the, the three that were at the camp and, um, they seem to be buying it, but, uh, the rest of you were closing in pretty quickly. Let me, uh, switch, switch our map over here and we're going to be on the, uh, right Upper right hand side, I believe, is where we all are. Stand by. Talk amongst yourselves while I change. <laughs> 10 out of 10 on that familiar name. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, wait till, I, you, wait till you see the actual icon for it. The, the summoning process was uh, quite extensive. Uh, uh, I'm sure it was also very impressive. <laughs> well, <laughs> very is a strong word. He, he did cartwheels. <laughs> That's true. No, That's true. He, no full extension on the legs or, <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, yes, Absraham is is my spotter for life. Uh, oh. I had to remember if if Abzerham was close, and depending on when, where you show up, uh, uh, yes, he will he will make his introduction to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so you, uh, uh, Narcissus, has just laid down the uh, the 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 ruse on them. They seem to have bought it momentarily. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Because you were, you guys were starting to come in a little bit hot as we got to the end of the uh, session there. This group? Nah. I think we were all approaching kind of with Herbert from a distance to, you know, keep an eye on things and, and then pop out if, if things go south, basically. Okay. 
Emelf yeah. was in uh, full sneak mode while Sledge was wait, where'd everybody go? Mode. <laughs> yeah, Sledge got to the this little clearing uh, that that he um, found. <clears throat> he sent Abzerham out, uh, discovered the the three folks over in the woods, uh, called them back, and then basically looked up. And everyone was gone. Um, so uh, he knows that uh, Leon Goodname, uh, the fake Leon Goodname, uh, has moved forward to talk. Um, but at this point, he is hunkered down uh, right by this tree with abs or ham, uh, kind of waiting to see how Leon plays this. So, uh, Sledge, why don't you go ahead and give me a stealth roll, please, since... You didn't know the plan, and you looked up, and everyone was suddenly gone. <laughs> the plan! Oh, <laughs> all right. Let us get a stealth check. Ooh, nice. my goodness, with a net 20 for a Every 26. A uh, you hid so well that Abzraham doesn't know where you went. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's like, what the... Hey boss, where'd you go? Um that that is truly, truly impressive. Uh I, I literally slid behind the tree. Uh, you know, the the oils uh helping me <laughs> just wrap right around that tree quickly. Gross. Um <laughs> All right, so the uh you again you 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 hear the the ruffians uh chatting with Narcissus uh that's well. That's that stupid kid uh, lost the other keg. Ah, uh, god damn! I hate that guy. I don't even. What? Why is your friend so stupid? You can see that the um the uh, the green dot here is is addressing the other the other red robe. Why is your friend so stupid? <sighs> now there's just one keg of beer for all of us. Well, go ahead and bring it in. And Narcissus. Uh, acting as Leon Goodname, uh, we'll move in and set the keg of beer down. What is everyone else's next move? Uh, probably just keep an eye on, or at least uh, Aerith is just keeping an eye in the distance, um, making herself ready to, I guess, holding an action in case anything goes down. Okay. So. Again, are you uh, holding action as well? Yep, you're doing that too. Raven. I'm actually going to sneak around a little bit more. Yay, being my ninja ass self in the uh, trees. I see. Okay, this is this is my favorite part. It's like, oh, buddy, we're going to make you play a scene with yourself. Some <laughs> Aren't you doing that all night? Like, we're just here to watch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it feels that way sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so good at it, buddy. Um. Uh, yeah. So they chat for a while, and uh, they start drinking a little bit, and it's just mundane stuff, bitching about the kids or slapping around the guy in the red robes a little bit. Um. And uh, Narcissus trying to press for information. So. Uh, so. <laughs> When is uh, when is when is Soren uh, coming back? What's what's he off off to? Oh, wow, that's, that's kind of Soren's business, uh, don't you think? You know what he's up to. Oh yeah, 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 right, right. You guys gonna continue to hold? Um, so uh, abs are hand. Abzraham, I'm right over here. Uh, I'm mentally uh, <laughs> calling uh, Abzraham. Um, <clears throat> if I could, uh, Abzraham, just being a normal owl with an eight pack, um, <laughs> will fly uh, above the trees here. And I'd kind of like to send Abzraham out a little bit further uh, this way, keeping an eye out on. Uh, anyone who might be returning uh, to the camp. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm distracted at because I just realized what the problem is. 
Well, except maybe I didn't. I'm, uh, my, my... I'm on the wrong window for the map, so I'm going to be trying to figure that out while you guys play. Uh, yeah, so Absraham flies out there. Let me open you up a little bit more. Polygon reveal. Uh, currently not a whole lot going on out there. Um, I think <clears throat> mentally, uh, to Gen, um, Sledge, who's still sort of, <laughs> uh, painted against this tree over here, uh, will mentally reach out and, uh, it seems that our friend Leon, you can almost hear the air quotes, uh, um, is, uh, is, uh, conversing, but uh, I'm not sure how safe it is for them to be alone. Uh, and I don't know where any of you are. Uh, and that's what I said to uh, Gen as Sledge's. Alright. Right. Gen will try and creep in a little closer, I guess. Okay, I was going to say, could everybody, even if you're just going to hold, give me a round of stealth checks, please, the four of you. Not 20 on stealth. Nice. Nice. Oh, your nat 20 is way better than my nat 20 on stealth. So that's a, a 26. I'm sorry, a 33, a 17, a 24, and a 24. You know, even uh even with the 17, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you slide on that. Alright, again, you're gonna try to move and get position a little bit. More so I'll just creep a little bit closer. Can I at least see them? Like, do I have a good eye on him? Sure, yeah, you absolutely do. Um the um the the one nearest you they so they they're not they're not fully into their cups, but they're they're kind of on the edge of uh kind of that that mm. that tipsy edge there. Um the uh the one closest to you uh with the green dot, she definitely has the uh the appearance of of a druid the um the red robe seems just like one of the standard red robes just as pathetic as the other one that you guys to your knowledge have only beaten up and tied up and the um the yellow dot certainly seems like one of the wizards that uh, had been back at candlekeep and there by this point that narcissus is uh beginning to lead them in a little bit of song and so they're 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 you know kind of quietly hushedly sea shantying just a little bit i will respond mentally uh or telepathically i should say back to sledge uh don't worry i'm watching them carefully she'll be fine Um, <clears throat> Sledge, hearing that is like, oh, well, that is good. Um, where did you guys go? And, um, uh, <laughs> feeling lucky, uh, <laughs> Sledge moves, you know, a couple of feet, uh, this direction. Mm, stealth check, please. Aha. <laughs> A broken clock is only right twice a day, right? So, uh... It's okay, so... You're, you're doing what, uh, what all of us sneaky ones are trying to do right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Best okay, rolls nice. ever for everyone, with a 19 coming in clutch again. So, yes, uh, I am definitely sensing a TPK coming with all these good rolls <laughs> yeah. in the front. Me trying to get you into action, and you guys unable to get into it with good, good rolls. Oh, we're, we're um, observing first. Um, and then I sneak around to, uh, and end up way around, so kind of hook around the top, and end up back here in position in case of this wizard. Okay. Um, Leon, good name, is gonna stand up. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a piss. I'll be back. And you see what you know is Narcissus. 
uh, come back over here to where you all are. And we'll just <laughs> sort of give you the rundown. The, uh, these guys don't seem to, to know anything. Uh, Soren is here somewhere, but they... They didn't tell me. They said that I should know, and they I didn't want to press that. So to get any information, we're probably going to have to be a little more direct with them. I'm sure you, you can't get them more drunk. Well, there's only the one keg of beer, and we're about halfway through that. Though in saying that, you're being that close, you can see that the they are still... They're still putting it down so I mean you could wait it out and they will probably get a little drunker I suppose one question when you were talking them up uh, which one seemed to be uh, given the orders um, who might know the most uh, it's hard to say but uh, the, 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 the the druidess woman uh, at least seems to be barking the most orders uh if she's if she's not in charge, she she certainly thinks she is. Well, I suppose then that's uh, the only person that we need to talk to. Um, should we attempt to get the <clears throat> jump on them? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I got them liquored up. Surely that's a that's enough for for you all to to deal with them. We could tie him up and question him like the other two. We could bring all five of them together. So, <clears throat> so mentally, oh, well, and I guess she's on there, but um, through the uh, telepathic um, link with Gan, um, uh, again, it appears that the uh, the, the wild-looking one, the, the, the druid-looking one, um, that one we probably want to keep alive, but, well, the other ones... Um, and kind of with the assumption that Gen will uh, switchboard that out uh, to, to the uh, other folks uh, yeah. on, on the bond there. Sledge um, says, so, kill them all. Sledge. <laughs> <laughs> no Sorry. consequences. <laughs> well, Sledge said. Uh, what, does, what does Gen say to, to Aerith? The satyr thinks we should leave the druid alive. And the other one? Well, what do you think? I fire my crossbow at him. <laughs> Ooh, which one are you going to shoot? The one that's not the druid woman. So let's say... I mean, that guy is like a weakling if he's if if the cloaks are like their skill level so uh, yeah, he's the yellow he, here he for sure looks just as as weak and wimpy as uh as the other one that you you fought with earlier oh damn or, we're no really that's far away that's true that's a, he actually was 10 foot squares you didn't fight him he uh he brained himself on a tree trunk <laughs> remember the squares are in 10 foot <laughs> okay um yeah i will uh Yep, I will move 30 feet closer, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll fire with my crossbow. Do I need to roll initiative? Uh, no, I will give this to you as a surprise, and then we'll roll initiative after that. With a nat oh. one. Oh, no. It, uh, I mean, it, 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 uh, it, it, it's, it almost would have gone past him, but he, he was just pulling his cup up, and it sticks in the bottom of his cup, your crossbow bolt. What the fuck? Do I get advantage from being in stealth? Oh, you know what you do because you were you were in you were in stealth and you were fully hidden, and you had rolled a thirty three. So yes, unfortunately, Ooh. or fortunately, twenty six. Much better. Yes, right, that. Cool. Uh, so he's he's bringing his cup up, and you you for sure pinging him just right in the shoulder. Ooh, for thirteen. 13 piercings? piercing damage um now is this just i get one attack as a as a surprise or can yes. i do like a full round nope just one attack as a surprise That's fine. and now everybody please oh got a clear uh please roll initiative 
Oh, okay. So, sorry, just to make sure. So they're 10 foot, but we're actually measuring them as five foot. Yeah, we're doing five foot on moving our, our characters, but the it's it, the measurement of it out is 10 feet. Okay, so then I can move even closer. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh... It's a demiplane, man. The math is weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right, does that get me everyone? Aerith, Sledge again. Still missing... Um... Raven, did you not have your token selected? Oh, my, my initiative's on there. Oh, yes, you just don't have the, your name is just mm -hmm. funky. That's true. Sort descending. All right. Well, shockingly, uh, oh, Raven is first. <laughs> uh, Raven, you are uh, the in, initiative is is called, but you are in stealth. And uh, we'll be making at least your first a swing at advantage. I just on. Um, are we having um, a fake good name rolling in also? No. Okay, I'll just just. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> She's having an ill reaction to the beer. Well, we'll see if the um, yellow dot wizard has no reaction to my fists. <laughs> Plot twist, she's joining the other side. No. <laughs> Plot twist, we were already on the other side. She just didn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 15 and a 19 on the die, so 29 to hit. Yeah, I'm going to say that that hits. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, you only hit by like double, so don't get too uh, too crazy. And that is fourteen points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. On the first strike. Okay. Minus fourteen. And uh, stunning strike, Mr. Wizard. Can you try to do a, a con save? I can. Oops. Con save. Uh, wow, that is a kraken on a con save. So, uh, that is that is uh, at least a twenty for my con nice. save. So I am not stunned on that one. <laughs> All right, and I will kick at him because bastard didn't get stunned. <laughs> 22 to hit. 22 hits. All right. For 11 points of damage. Okay. Minus 11. And you do another, another stunning strike. Um. Not that I'm trying to siphon off all your key. No. <laughs> well, good thing I don't, I don't have like a bunch of it anyways already at the moment. <laughs> Sure, I'll, I'll be nice. Uh, we'll, we'll throw another one. All right. What's my DC? 15. Oh, okay. That time it's only a five. All right. So I, I kicked him in the balls because I'm pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> you know, it, uh, it definitely happens. So he is, uh, he's wavy lined because you, you ball stunned him. Uh, That's what I had in my mind. But I was like, man, I hope he actually gets stunned so I can fall to see what the trip is. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, all anything right. else? Anything else for you? And, and uh, flurry of blows. Well, of course, the fourteenth monk attack. <laughs> I think I was only on number eighteen of, of twenty-three. <laughs> uh, so that'd be a sixteen hit. I rolled uh, really low, on, even on vanish. A sixteen hits. <laughs> Because what did, did you, uh, yeah, 16 hits, so yeah, because he's still on that advantage, yeah, 11 more points of damage, right? Okay, that's pretty good, <laughs> pretty good opener so far. 
wait, there's more. <laughs> you got flurry or blows. <laughs> Monk. Hold on, I have to go add 100 hit points to all my bad guys. <laughs> we call that the monk buffer. <laughs> uh, well, I rolled a two and a kraken. <laughs> Ooh, tell me, tell me, tell me what the hardship is. All right, so while 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 Z's counting that up, and one of the house rules in my game is critical is a is full base damage. So if you have a one d eight weapon, it's eight points, and then you roll your d eight to get your your extra damage. So this is this is gonna be not good for me. Well, there's also the uh, the, the slew of like darkened feathers that roll down her arm as she connects. So that is a total of 37 points of damage between <laughs> bludgeoning and necrotic. Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. It's just it's just not even right. <laughs> uh yeah, it's a little bit nuts. I, I I don't like it when you get a crit and you roll two ones and you're like, "Oh, well that seemed dissatisfying." I was uh, I hate that also. responding to a uh, to chat there. Uh anything else, Raven? Just like look at like, you're not putting me in timeout. <laughs> I forgot that there's the the history there of uh, those <laughs> wizards banishing you. Nobody puts Raven in a corner. That's true. Exactly. All right, Sled. Uh, Go Sled. Ooh. Um. So first, uh, Sledge will you know Abzraham, um, <clears throat> and start uh, sending his beautiful familiar. Uh, forward, the uh, full movement uh, there. Um, Sledge will take a five foot step, 10 foot step. Uh, five, 10, yep. Uh, and uh, right here in this area, um, Sledge is like, well, if I know one thing about drinking, that it doesn't go great with slippery surfaces. Let me introduce you to uh, Sledge's Serendipitous Salve. And uh, as I begin to cast this uh, almost kind of bottle uh, looking um, arcane energy shows in between these two, the uh, uh, green dot and the other uh, red robe there. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the side of it is a very large image of Sledge Ding, big old flash on the teeth, thumbs up, like, hey, and it explodes, and the area is covered in grease. Um, oh, nice. What's the yes. what's the radius on, on grease? Ten foot square. A ten foot square. Wow, that is that is quite the description. Uh do they get as oh, it's just difficult terrain. They don't get a save for that. It's just difficult. Uh they will. Um, so it's a dexterity save, or they will fall prone. Oh, my goodness, even better. Even better. Uh, all right, so this is going to be on green dot. Uh, that's a seven. Uh, yes, yeah, so the DC is 19. And this is going to be on the red robe. Uh, the red robe actually rolls a Kraken. Nice. So he can't do much, but he did not fall down. Uh, the uh this one though is I, I wish there were better descriptors on uh on these so this one is prone prone and <laughs> tipsy and if you're um 10 foot cube or whatever also hit the yellow one you would auto fail it yeah i i i was thinking about it um and uh, I've got Abraham's over there. Uh, that is what Sledge can do this turn. Um, yes, yeah, slip and slide. I like to think that you just yell that out loud. Yes. Stealth, Sledge, stealth. Uh. So it would uh, normally would be the, the Red Cloak's turn. But we're going to do a smash cut for just a moment here. Back into Candlekeep. Riala is in the tavern. Um, you have come in. You have uh, chatted with 
uh, the Master Sage. You have chatted with Sarah. Um, you have done the 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 things that I that I sent you uh, earlier, and the um, you have triggered the the portal to the book, and so now it stands there in front of you, shimmering. Well, here we go. I. Uh, I, I suppose I don't have to tell you the the severity of this. It, it, Soren, Soren knows you're coming. This this can only be a trap. Yeah, and in all likelihood, Zara already in the middle of it, so they probably need me. I guess I better get going. At least one of us read the stupid book. Well, we will be here when you get back, um, or whenever who gets back gets back. So oh, we'll be back. Don't you worry. Godspeed. Head through the portal. Alrighty. So I'm going to drag you onto where you show up. My goodness, there's a lot of stuff in this game. <laughs> You pop in. This is where we see whether Buddy likes me or not. <laughs> uh, you pop in. Uh, you are kind of due, due south of them and to the west just a little bit. Um, do you see yourself there? I don't see me. We got two pings. It's a there's a ping party. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see me mm -hmm. now. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, but so you you appear in uh in, in this this place and to the north of you and just a little to the east you hear the unmistakable sound of shit popping off. Now, maybe that's not your party. <laughs> but if you think for a minute... It's probably not. I'm going to go the other way. <laughs> and then and then you hear... Slip and slip slide! And slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's them, all right. Uh, okay, and now I will... You you have I'll your full, full movement, full action. Just so I'll get on the the board there yeah i will uh uh i will allow you to have a a full uh turn uh, a movement turn uh okay. if you'd like can i okay can i discern at all like distance like how far away i think they are from me right now You could try, but that would negate your ability to dash. So you could do a perception check and try to figure that out. Um, but then that, that means you'll only get. Your oh, you know what? The thing that dash. I was thinking, the thing that I was thinking about, would make no difference anyway. So disregard. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna haul ass. All right. So move, uh, move your move there, and depending on the route you take, I may need to open some more space for you. Yeah, would darkness. I be able to? Yeah, would I be able to go straight through that darkness that's due north of me? Just head straight for the. Yeah, abs absolutely. Okay. So each square is five, right? So yeah. Five. Yeah, I mean you can only move twelve squares, I think. So I don't think you're into the darkness just yet. Did I can't no oh, math? I can't. <laughs> I'm not a rogue. I can't bonus action dash. So hold on. 5, 10, 15. That puts me roughly here. Okay. I will, though, give you some. Dang it. Um, yeah, so that, that clears up a little bit, uh, as you continue to move, I will continue to open that the, uh, the sounds absolutely get louder and 
It for sure sounds like uh, people that you know. <laughs> and now we're going to pick it back I up. recognize the smell of that coconut oily grease anywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> you can judge distance by the time between slip and slide. <laughs> Nice. Um, all right. So back up into this stuff. The the guy in the red. So it's difficult terrain, which has my movement. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He's going to try to get to here. And I think that will provoke an attack of opportunity from Raven, if you should so like to take one. Sure, why not? That is a dirty 20. That for sure is going to hit. All right. That is 13 points of damage. Oof, duh. And uh, we'll, have you, we'll, we'll burn another key. Uh, stunning strike. Oh no! Okay, so he may not have gotten to move that far then. Uh, so that is a ten. Fifteen, buddy. So you uh you pop Welcome him back. when he runs by, and since he's all greased up, he actually Try slides. Kind of clothesline him. <laughs> yeah, he uh he kind of you hit him and clothesline him, and he slides, and uh. Now he is greasy prone as well. Uh -huh. And stunned. And oh, greasy yeah. Prone greasy and prone. Stunned. Greasy prone and stunned. A sledge Saturday night. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is all he is going to do. Uh, Aerith. Yeah. So, uh, how so you is have he three, looking, you by have the way? Three people on the ground that you get advantage on any attacks that you want to do, basically. Well, um, I'm going to run over to this poor guy who's all slimy and slippery on the ground. Uh, um, so, Yellow Dot is not slimy. Uh, green oh, green Dot bad. slimy. Yellow Dot looking pretty rough, though. All right. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That guy's prone, right? That guy's prone. He's not as rough, but he's not not rough. Okay, would I be able to run past this gentleman without taking an attack opportunity? Oh yeah, because he's stunned. He's stunned. All right, great. So I'm going to run over there then, um, and I will take, uh, so with advantage, um, how do you roll advantage? Is it shift again? Shift. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's three attacks on oh. him at 24, 28, and a 23. Do they hit? <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to let you know that even your misses hit because he only has an AC of 13. <laughs> Perfect. All right. That is uh, three slashes with her rapier, nine piercing damage, followed by eight piercing damage, followed by seven piercing damage. So that's... Uh, Math is not my strong suit, though. 24. So why don't you go ahead and tell me what it looks like? Oh yes. She she feeling embarrassed from her nat one, just pulls the blade from her side, charges for, forwards. You just see her making this really large swinging motions with her rapier, and after like one or two seconds after this, he just kind of falls into like different chunks onto the ground. Like she, he has been cut in three slices. Cut in Thwain. In Thwain, <laughs> he is cut in Thwain. <laughs> Uh, not that you haven't done enough. Is there anything else that you would like to do on this turn? Um, let me think. Uh, that was amazing, by the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am good, actually, for the moment. Yeah, I'm good at the moment. Thank you. That's All right. the end of my turn. Uh, you hear the familiar like impact sound and kind of wet sound of, of punches and swords and blood and maybe some grease. Uh, clearly you hear that from, from above where you are. Um, it's actually, you probably have better vision on a lot of this already. Um, 
what would you like to do? I mean, you could always turn around and run away. Good luck, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at um, the tavern. <laughs> Why did I even come through the portal? Should have just got drinks. I'm just going to keep. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to keep running um, northward. So let me just count this out here. So I'll put it there, and then. I am going to be just on the edge of that little bit of darkness there. Oh, God, that's the only place that you die on this map. Right, that one square, oh, the one. death square. <laughs> uh, all right, and do you want to yell anything? Friends, I'm coming. No. <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, so. <laughs> Friends, you say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so green is uh prone but not stunned if that's if i'm correct on that yeah yeah oh my goodness gracious um green is going to use half of her movement to stand up and then she is going to cast uh at gen entangle and so I need a, str a strength saving throw please okay oh boy strength saving throw you say that's not good uh, that does not beat the DC so you okay. are now restrained by uh, these entangling plants just, just kind of root up out of the ground, out of nowhere. How did and she know where I was? Because I was I never came out of hiding. I haven't attacked a single person yet. Uh, oh, is that true? Yeah, I stealthed I, a long time ago. I am sorry. I That's okay. I did not realize that you were still in stealth uh, and you have not gone yet, so that makes perfect sense. We're Feel gonna free say to then, aim it at me instead, because I did just cut a friend into in twain. Well, she, the wizard is the one that greased her, so uh, <laughs> so sledge. <laughs> so we'll dis again disregard that save and uh, sledge. Please make a strength save. Uh, uh, I'm a muscle wizard after all. Uh, all right. You son of a bitch! <laughs> you are on fire, dude. You need to like get out. <laughs> So he, he rolled a, tw a, a, a 20, a nat 20, for a total of 22. You need to drop off the stream right now and go play some table games. <laughs> so like, we're all going to die something. is what's going to happen. Uh, so the, I see the vines like starting to try to like come up, and Sledge is like, what is a snap? What is... Uh, what is uh. <laughs> I, yeah, I like to think that you snapped about half of them off, and the other half just couldn't get purchased <laughs> on you because you're just so slick. <laughs> Uh, she's really, really dismayed by the, the turn that, that her life is taking. Uh, and she's not going to run toward the fighter and she's not going to run toward the monk. She doesn't know that anyone is there. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And so it's still she's... difficult terrain through, ah, uh, Greece. So it, so yeah. it is. So she's going to try to run to... And she used half getting up. Fuck a duck. <laughs> Alright, then she's just going to try to get out of the grease. One should not drink and mess with grease, I know. And so, passing through this square and then out technically does put her into range to provoke an attack of opportunity from Gen should you choose to do it. And since you're in stealth, you would get an attack of opportunity at advantage, which unfortunately probably means you also get sneak. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and take that attack of opportunity. You said I'll get advantage? Uh, yes. Okay. And with open accuracy, that's... Yep. Okay. 20, 22 still hits. All right. Oof. Uh, 16 plus 7 is uh, 23, it looks like. Yep. Yep, yep. 
Uh, yeah, that was definitely shocking uh, for her to get hit. Um, she's not expecting that. No way! Uh, oh my gosh, Jarpo has just come in with 500 bits. Thank you so much, DM Jarpo. Um, so 500, 500 bits is going to be enough for a, a D20 inspo. Does anybody not have a D20 inspo? I don't have one. <clears throat> I don't. Well, then we're going to click the inspo button. I'm going to rename it to inspo. Oh, sorry, forgive me. I do actually have an inspiration. Forgive me. A D20. So, uh, is Gin the only one? Me and Gin, are we the only ones without? So. Oh, all right, let's so it's, it's between me and you. Let's see how it goes here. Roll high again. Roll high again. Uh, again, rolled a 19 and I rolled a two. So again, you now have a d20 inspiration. Thanks to DM Jarpo. Thank you so much. Thank you, DM Jarpo. Much. Thank you. DM Jarpo. Um, Thank you very much. All right. Getting more and more nervous with all these rolls, though, guys. <laughs> well, luckily, I, I, I mean, that happen. one, that's a macro roll. So that one, we don't count that one. Don't worry, um, the house of cards that'll fall first will be Sledge. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, green uh, blindsided out of nowhere. Uh, Archmage is uh, taking a nap right now, and I don't think has the, even the ability to do anything until Raven's next turn. End of so my next turn. <laughs> it's at the end of Raven's next turn. That's right. Uh, again, it is now your actual turn, finally. All right, so with her uh, surprise as I step out from behind a tree, I suppose, or uh, drop out of a, a branch, I uh, just smile, create ah. another blade, and throw it at her. Um, you uh, you hit her so hard on that sneak out that the map wasn't even aligned for the stream and nobody said anything. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you shook the world. You shook the world. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, a 22. Oh, yeah, it's not even a question of whether that hits. Uh, so that is six psychic damage, and I am going to follow up with the bonus action attack of a second blade. Does a 16 hit? Uh, 16 is a is a contest. So another house rule in my games is if you, r rather than meet to beat, if you roll the number that is the DC on an attack, we each do a d20 roll off, and the higher one either will just take the hit or just kind of glance it off. So you and I just roll a d20 okay. with oh, nothing no, added. Oh, no, I a six. Uh, well, I only rolled an eight. So uh, you, that um, means that you on the second attack, you have just, just glanced past. Uh, the first one, though, still hits for six psychic. Is um, that right? Yeah, just six. Six. Um, that's okay, because that's still six less than she had before. All right. Um, and I guess that will be my action for now. Okay. Uh, Actually, I will move up next to her at least, and then that's it. That's okay. She's uh, less than pleasant about that. Uh, Raven. All right. So I'm just going to continue kicking away at this guy. Do not like him, nor do I like his brothers I had met earlier. <laughs> it's just a little banishment. You you got to like hang out. Yeah, get some Mai Tais and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right now, this is reminding Sledge of a uh, punching bag at the gym. Um, <laughs> two and another Kraken. <laughs> All right, lay it on me. All right, it's not, there's, there's not a lot to it. It's not, not no necrotic right yet. So he, he there's a dirty 20 damage. 20 damage. All right. Why mm. don't you tell me what that looks like? Yeah. All right. So uh, as she's, you know, looking at him like, no, you were not going to get a chance to pull me away. No, no, no. And I just pretty much did that. Do a roadhouse, you know, thing. yeah, for those who know the movie. Roadhouse. Kick. Yep. <laughs> and just connect it on the side of his face and just slam him into the ground as hard as I can. And and it, you uh, you definitely feel the bones in the neck separate. And if it weren't for the skin 
the uh, there would have been a little bit of a of a wizard soccer ball going through the trees there. All uh, right. But yeah, that and, one is finished. And then. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right on over oh, here, oh, flanking oh, with, with flanking. again. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I will do my second attack. This lady. And since you apparently want they, want to, they want us to keep the things, you know, alive, or work on doing non-lethal. Okay. <laughs> I, I, the, can I give a slight little wink over towards, uh, you know, towards Aerith about the, the one I'm going towards, like, but don't worry. All right. 14 and a 19, so 29 to hit. 29 hits. And that is seven points of damage. Okay. And, and I'm going to, yeah, flare blows. <laughs> uh, seven and a 15, so 25 to hit. <laughs> Shockingly, 25 also <laughs> hits. <laughs> the advantage helps a lot, you know? Oh, it's it so does. It so does. Uh, it's uh, 10 more points of damage. Okay. And then... It's going to... Then the next hit, or next swing, is going to be like an uppercut. Hopefully. That's, again, in the high 20s. It's 27. 4 and a 17. Yeah, she's uh, she's thinking of ways to actively kill herself with her own magic. <laughs> All right, let's see, six, nine, and so that is sixteen points of damage as Ooh. the black feathers, you know, rise over her her face from underneath her chin. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's uh, I mean, she's definitely beat down. She's not a. Uh... She's not looking too rough yet, but she's definitely beat down. Mm -hmm. Any other right. atrocities that you any, any more <laughs> war crimes you'd like to commit on uh, on my on my druid there? No, I'm good for the moment. I think you know. We'll see what happens in the next six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking ahead of what she's gonna do, and it's like one, two, three, four. Oh, actually, that guy's dead. One, two, three turns before. Ooh, she might not get back to her turn. <laughs> uh, Sledge. Uh, so, uh, Sledge, um, first of all, will call on uh, Abzorham one more time. Um, and Abzorham will actually fly about here. Mm hmm. And we'll be timing up so that um, when Aerith uh, comes running up the side here, Abzorham would like to provide the help action by <laughs> rolling over onto his back and flapping by the druid's face, giving okay. her that like wink, uh, showing off his abs as he's flying by her, um, providing the help action to Aerith, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I, I love it. And then uh, Sledge himself will um, uh, look uh, <clears throat> at the uh, druid and uh, greasy, inebriated. What you need right now is an alarm bell. And sh uh, sure enough, the jiggle waits from... <laughs> From the 90s, do, 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 start showing Jake up. Wayne. <laughs> Show up right next to uh, this druid's head as it begins to do, 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 and I cast Toll the Dead. Beautiful. Um, so, and uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's possible, but uh, I would only like to knock her out, not to melt her brains. So uh, I will say that, uh, so on a spell, it's typically not possible, but I don't know that even you have it in you to melt her brains to death at where she is on hit points. Yes. Uh, so what's the DC? Uh, it is oh, 19. 19 wisdom. Uh, ugh, she has only managed a 14. 
Well, it's okay. It was only nine points of damage uh, as the shake weights go off. Um, and that is Sledge's turn. Amazing. Uh, Aerith. Okay, so he was providing the help action. Um, what with, like, is there anything I can particularly roll that on? Well, no, no, so as you already have advantage because she is prone. Were she not, you would have advantage because of the help action. Oh, I see, I well, see, I see. She's up now, isn't she? Well, no, she got up, and then Gen, I believe, ah. didn't Gen reprone her? Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, maybe reprone. she is up. Reprone. I like that. Reprone. Maybe not. Maybe. Um, okay, she, so now I, I still so have advantage. You still anyways. have it. You still have advantage. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now I do want to specify that these are non-lethal attacks. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna do them anyways. Uh, that is a 20, a 29, and a 24 to hit. Those for sure hit. Okay. Uh, that is 11, 8, and 12 piercing damage. So 31 damage. And okay. if she is still looking a-okay, there is something else I can do. Well, she's definitely, uh, a-okay would not be a phrase I would use. She, she for sure is still, is still up and it, okay. it, she does not look to be on death's door yet. Upon... Uh, seeing her not going down and having the help of my friends and like wanting to to do it, I'm gonna action surge and hit again. Um, oh yeah! So that is bum bum bum. Plus, I want to make the most of this advantage while I have it. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen will not hit. Oh no! You, you do have all three of your stats. I mean, action surge. Yeah. Oh, I get all yeah. three. Yeah, yeah. You get all oh, your it extra. says one more. Oh my okay. goodness! It gives you another okay, that's action. Epic. It gives you another action, action. But it, that is oh. one action still. Oh, oh. oh. a twenty-seven oh. and then a nat twenty. Uh, and then a crit. Oh yeah, damage it up. All right, so I'll roll for the the non-crit first. That is twelve, and then you say for the crit, it is the max damage. So one d eight plus six. Uh, yeah, if you if you have perfect crits turned on in the D&D Beyond, if you use the pink box on that crit one, it should roll it correctly. Uh, uh, I don't yes. know if that's right or not. But... So it's, it's yeah, 1d8 plus 6, which is 14, plus your crit roll, which is 3. Okay, so cool. So that's 17 plus 12, um, which is... Maths. <laughs> 29? 29. 29. So is she still up? Now she looks like she's barely hanging on. Well, then I'm like going to use a psionic dice. She's, she's for sure like, like there's some teeth missing and there's more blood coming out of her nose than probably is in her. I uh, will then use a psionic dice then to do a psionic strike as my cat walks across the desk. Stop Can you do that non-lethally? Um, can we try your weapons with psionic force immediately after you hit a target? Um, force damage to the target. I mean, I don't... Is that... I I feel if you specify... Or is well, it, it, it doesn't work with spells. I'm just trying to determine um, whether psychic... A psychic attack is a spell like that or not. You know, if Riala was here, this wouldn't even be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone anyone have any? Is that is it is it something I, I can I, do? I, my opinion. I feel like, I feel like Raven's whether it matters. It out right now. I don't know yeah. what the real rule is, but my opinion is that if it's a mental thing, you should be able to restrain your like mental yeah. ability, right? It's, okay, I'll buy uh, that. By, by the quick reading of it, since it does it does the damage along with the weapon. So since she's doing it with a melee weapon, the damage she can non-lethal will did. If she did it with the, her crossbow bolt, she'd be blowing someone's brains out. Okay, I'll buy that. That's, <laughs> okay, that sounds like sense. a good, uh, uh, nice nice teamwork from everyone there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so put your psionic on it then. That Ooh. is an additional six psionic energy damage as she once again does this action surge of another three strikes, still sees her up, and then you just see these uh, almost like mental rapiers just come forth and just stab at her now, by chance, frustrated you, face. By chance, did you do that with your, on your your uh, your critical hit one? Because that would max the die out first and then let you reroll and get the extra damage die. 
it's it's not needed. It's not needed. It's a, <laughs> I'm just helping her. It's, Thank it you. Is, it is not needed. You uh, you do that, and she, her eyes just glaze over, and she tips to the side and hits the ground like a sack of potatoes. So she is, since you specified non-lethal, she is unconscious at basically at zero hit points, uh, stable. Uh, she is what we like to call knock the fuck out. All right. <laughs> Aerith is stood there like, <sighs> like after doing all that, just out of breath. <laughs> and, and just because I think it is cinematically fun, that's right when Riala is on the scene and you, like you see that last hit and just down. Like th you see three of your party members ganged up on one person. So Riala is also like, <sighs> but that's just because she's been running <laughs> for this whole time in her like chain mail and big mace and shield and everything. And just like, <sighs> And looks around and's like, oh damn it, I'm I'm too late. <laughs> uh all right, so you have uh you you have dispatched two of these and uh and definitely subdued one of them. Um Narcissus is still feeling a bit a bit under the weather with the uh the ale that, that she drank. Can I take the manacles off of Narcissus to then put on. Yeah, you saw where she stashed them, and she <laughs> she kind of drunkenly right looks, in the cleavage. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 That she didn't out. hide it. You know. <laughs> she drunkenly looks at you taking them and kind of tries to flash you like, a, oh, and then she's like, mm. <laughs> and she tried to have a sexy moment, and then it just went. It just it went sideways. Not, it did not work. Mm. Went horribly wrong. Uh, it, went, it went terribly wrong, but I've got the manacles. Yeah, I will. Um, I will actually give them to Gen to put on her because I think that he's probably more better at using manacles than uh, Aerith. Why would you assume that? <laughs> <laughs> that is, you're, you're better at escaping from them, so I figured you'd be better at putting them on people. That doesn't track. <laughs> well then fine I'll do it then sorry <laughs> no 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 so he'll he'll put them on okay I told you to stay out of my room <laughs> uh, my room oh my god let, let us not have another grass incident okay um, <laughs> mom he's playing in the grass again uh, <laughs> um so uh, as Riala uh, comes up and uh, I sort of at this point kind of see us uh, walking um, towards this uh, druid here, um, <laughs> Absraham will come flying over and will land on Sledge's shoulder. But you'll notice he lands backwards so that he can look over one shoulder and you swear this, this owl's giving you a wink as he does the full turn. Just just the amazingness that is abs or ham. Uh, Does a 360 with his head spin. <laughs> yes. The owl yes. head. <laughs> the whole. Uh, and as we're, we're uh, walking uh, up here, uh, Sledge is, well, it, it's been quite interesting. And, uh, oh, oh, well, this is abs or ham. Uh, what kept you, Riala? What, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yes. Um, well, we interrogated that guy that we caught didn't really get much information out of him but um turns out you guys just came through the book without reading it so i decided to go ahead and take the time to actually read it because you know information is helpful when especially when dealing with wizards and books and stuff well it it looked like a small book i not even worth my time to lift you know and so i it was too uh, heavy for you wasn't it uh, the first word was pretty big so yeah, i yeah. uh anyways um well i you're going to have to share this information uh with, with the group um and uh, as we get up there i think at this point you know they're arguing about the manacles <laughs> um <laughs> i'm like well uh, where's Narcissus? See how I said it wrong again? Um, <laughs> she's the manacle person. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm over here, babe. <laughs> I, I believe you mean good name. 
Uh, yeah, she she's kind of in a in a half transition state between oh. Narcissus and Leon. Good name. Uh, it, it is it is a strange amalgam of of body and face that that she's wearing at the moment. Ooh. You don't see that every day. I think we just leave her where she is. Um, so we're going to interrogate this person. I think so. I mean, uh, Narcissus, just before you arrived, was chatting with them and uh, trying to get some information. Apparently, this this woman seems to be the one who knows the most, or at least pretending to be in charge of the kind of boys that are around so she might know something more um hopefully they'll be able to give us the location of insert bbeg name here soren yes soren yep that's mm -hmm. the one mm -hmm. you didn't by chance figure out what the uh, little red coins were about did you while you were out there um, well i don't know a lot but i do know that i think they might indicate that the Zimperim are involved somehow, um, but I'd have to, we'd have to do some more digging. That's really all I got from that. Hmm. What did the book say out of curiosity? So it is basically a, a play, a story of um, this guy that we're in here for, Quill, essentially. Um, it's his whole like life story essentially he, he's a good guy or he was um and long story short he was a good guy and then he got in contact with this crystal it was corrupted he basically became like kind of a vigilante he you know didn't he achieved his goals of revenge and then like kept going and it kind of got out of control a little bit so the harpers decided to stick him in here to stop him from hurting anybody else until they could figure out a cure for his curse so he's stuck in here and he's either got to be killed or freed from his curse and um, apparently he was friends with soren at one point in his life and this is this is like the uh, like a story of of his life or yes well it's it's a play so there could be some you know liberties taken with the story but yeah basically it was kind of a story of his life so if this uh, well I guess um, what part of the book are we in now is would this be the the first act or oh no we're in act four so the book went from act one to three at the end of act three that's when he gets stuck in the book with the harpers and um basically it ends with one of the wizards you know you know how they like to monologue and talk for a long time and, you know it just goes on and on and on but I then know, basically it's so basically annoying. he says that his faith is unknown and one day light will banish the darkness and i think that's where we are so it looks like we're the final act being in the final act do you do you happen to remember well where the um where the big scene takes place uh the maybe a direction from where we should head from here uh, I don't think it really gave any directions just that he was banished into the book into the demiplane um, by the harpers um, to keep him safe and to keep everyone else safe but they didn't say where in the demiplane or or how um, all I know is that he is cursed and we either must kill him or alleviate him of this curse with some kind of amethyst dagger uh, we have that uh mm -hmm. One of us, uh, oh. Isn't I, that, sure uh, I sure hope someone has it on their inventory sheet. Otherwise, it's still back Raven in the tavern. Does. Raven has it, as I recall. Um, yes, but we'll need that then if we're going to save him. Hmm. But no, no directions, nothing like that. Just that he was sent here. Well, that's that's amazing, uh, Riala. We, I mean, 
probably should have read that before we came in. Um, but uh, maybe the where can be provided by this person. And uh, I point at the uh, druid on the ground there. Um, are you two done arguing about the banicles? Or, 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 is she secure? Uh, like, no, you're supposed to. You're supposed to clip it like that. It's, it goes like this. <laughs> Otherwise, they can just slip out of it. You know the. You know the thing when you like dislocate your wrist and they just go. How, how often have you encountered manacles, Aerith? Looks, looks, at, looks, looks again. <laughs> <laughs> looks at Riala and is just like. To tell you tell you later it's fine <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> should be fine she right again <laughs> yes what was that you were saying about manacles oh just that they're, they're really cool and then i just slap her and try to wake her up <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> get up uh all right roll for damage Oh no, okay. Non-lethal, please. <laughs> Imagine if I kill her with a slap. <laughs> slap. <laughs> if, if it's non-lethal. Okay, there we go. A zero bludgeoning damage. All right. We love that for us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you go through all that trouble, that epic like slicing to non-lethal her, and then you just done uh, <laughs> oh no what have yeah, i done <laughs> you uh you give her a good smack and her head just kind of lolls around profanely in the dirt i could suggest why don't we also make sure she no longer has her casting components upon her so that way we don't have more shenanigans oh smart if you didn't have inspiration i'd give it to you <laughs> smart play uh, all right sure i'll i'll uh, add her down for uh components yeah so you, you you Make find sure a, you find a little uh a little mm -hmm. what you know is a component pouch uh mm -hmm. on on her belt on the side and yeah you you relieve her of that and now while you talk i go and see if she has anything that's verbal only i have a plan i put a gag in her mouth and i will talk to her with my mind because you can that. you can psychic out to her the i have is, the message cantrip the ah. thing is i don't think that lets them respond does it message does message yeah. does. Message does. oh message does okay cool all right though i like the idea of a good cop bad cop where gen is just asking questions that she can't respond to <laughs> and then Aerith is like, you he you know how he gets. You should just tell me and I'll make him stop just, yelling into your mind. Yeah, just just tell me and I'll make him stop asking questions. Okay. <laughs> oh, we could do that. Can we do that? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> you uh And everyone else looks and it's just creepy elf twins walking in a circle around her. Making like weird intently. facial expressions. Yeah, like Yeah. She uh just because I think it's cool. She she starts awake and sees most of you kind of standing, you know, at the ready and these two circling and she checks and she realizes she's bound and she can't she can't speak. And then she's just kind of kind of looking between the two of you as you as you berate her with questions in your mind. So this for the rest of you, this is all taking place in in silence and it's. It's kind of cool, but the longer it goes, the the more it shifts from the cool side of the scale to the creepy side of the scale. Um, so Especially I, when you occasionally just hear her being like, mm, mm, <laughs> out of nowhere. This is when we all like put on our, on our, our goths, you know, emo kid looks and like all stare at him. <laughs> Quick shout out and thanks for the, the raid from uh, the United Adventure Company. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. We're playing a little awesome. bit of Candle Keep over here. So our, our, uh, my players have, have uh, detained someone and tied her up and gagged her, and now they're using their message and, and psychic uh, abilities to play We're going to bully her telepathically. <laughs> yeah, good cop, bad cop, uh, in the mind. So uh, so for, for, for most of you, this is happening in silence, but for the two of you, I'd like you to... Uh, just play a, a quick little scene and then we'll we'll roll some intimidations and see how she fares on that. Okay, just a quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. 
please remind me of the BBEG's name because I always want to call him Solomon and I don't know if that's correct. Sorin. Sorin. I want to call him Solomon and I'm like, that's not right. I got to tell you that. I keep wanting to call him Sauron, so, you know. That would be great if you keep questioning her about someone she doesn't know. She's like, I really don't know where <laughs> Solomon me about is. Solomon. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, pa Panda, are you trained in intimidation? Um, I'm trained in persuasion. Me too. And uh, I'm trained in deception. Um, I have a plus one in intimidation. I have a plus three, so I guess it's fair that I went. I, I imagine as, as it begins to get creepy, uh, the silence like goes on. Sledge like takes the dung bell out and he just starts like <laughs> silently like flexing it like I wanna <laughs> I want to be creepy too. Um, <laughs> Just stare at her. You, not, you, don't, you don't have to do anything else. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I, I just looked down on my mask on my face. You know, it's creepy enough. <laughs> uh, I should ask, does she still count as hostile toward us? Sorry. For the purpose um, of like spells and whatnot. Well, she's definitely not friends with you. So I, I would say if, if if it's like friendly or hostile, she is hostile, but she is not. OK, she's not aggressive currently. She's right, looking at still at, hostile. Yes, I would say still hostile. She pretty well hates all of you and especially you since you got kind of that that you know busted her in the mouth out of nowhere. I did do that. <laughs> That's fair. No, I understand. I understand the hatred. Yeah. I just. Uh... <laughs> I just wish you wouldn't. Wish you'd give me You're a second chance. You're finally awake. <laughs> All right. Sauron, right? Sauron. Sauron, yeah. Sauron. <laughs> God damn it. Sauron. Sauron. Okay. Sauron. Sauron. Our whole Salamander. Is that we pronounce no one's name correctly ever. So yeah. it's fine. There it is. Yeah. We are the uh, nameless because we just don't get the names right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I don't know what your name is and we don't have much time, but tell us where Soren is. You can respond using your mind. Well, he's here. Where? In Wisteria Vale. Where in Vesteria Vale? Uh, somewhere that isn't here. He left us an hour and a half ago. Said he had to do some things in town. In town? And did he say when he was coming back? No. No, the, the boss doesn't normally tell you when they're coming back. They just come back when they want to. I look to, I look to, can Gen hear what I'm messaging? For no, the trip? I don't All think right. so. I will then basically message like rundowns to, to Gen afterwards. Um, mm. just, <sighs> can't, just clicking right. them off, cantrip, 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 cantrip. <laughs> yeah, cantrip, cantrip, Gen, cantrip, cantrip, cantrip. <laughs> Gen gets really close to her and... Uh, since I think by the rules I can't draw a psychic blade unless I'm attacking with it, I'm going to draw a real knife. Just, just as sort of a prop, um, Ooh, okay, and I'll, and and sort of let it play around her uh, face. I told my sister you were useless. Now, suppose we just killed you now and dumped you somewhere. As you are saying that, the the uh, the sky again just turns inky black. Thunder clouds rolling out of nowhere. Lightning streaks across the sky. There is no rain, but it is. It's that that horrific scene that that all of you except for Riala have have experienced. And because I was rolling while you were talking, I allowed it to coincide with your your bit there. So, uh, Aerith, please roll intimidation. Gen, please roll intimidation with advantage because that just fucking timed out with your, uh, your nastiness so perfectly. Can I and, roll persuasion instead? Uh, sure. You can roll persuasion instead. 
Yeah, I forgot we're doing we were doing good cup, bad cup. I forgot. Um Look, I'm giving you an opportunity to give us some answers. My brother is not lenient, especially when nothing good comes from it. She she messages back to you. Uh yeah, he is scary AF and I, I, he, he's here. He went into the town. I, I don't know what he was doing or when he's coming back. He, he will probably come back here, uh, if you just wait, but you could also catch him in the town. I, he, he doesn't tell me what he's doing. Who's he with? Is he with a group or is he alone? Mm, make another persuasion check, please. Okay. Can I do it with advantage considering that? Yeah, can I actually assist her with my yeah. roles, uh, this time? Can I lean in and say another, another thing? Um, yeah. So the clouds are still are still going. The thunder clouds, the lightning is still flashing. Let's. I want to hear what you say. I wonder how real the storms are here. If we could just tie you up somewhere high enough and let the lightning strike you. Oh yeah. Okay, that'll do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just intimidating enough. Yeah. Go 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 down and down and down. I only roll the 12, even with advantage, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see what, what uh, Gin's intimidation with advantage is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. There we go. Uh, 16. Hmm. The, uh... The group is, is smaller than it once was, but... And she kind of looks at the, at the two on the ground. Uh... But there are more than just us. I'm asking, does he travel with people? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes he's by himself. Sometimes he's he's with people. I mean, uh, uh, during this, the, the, the clouds break and just evaporate kind of into nothing. It's it's back to a, a, a clear sky, um, kind of an afternoon sky. Um, now... You see that gentleman over there, and I gesture to Raven, who sat with his mask on, looking scary. Lady. He's... Oh, sorry. She. She. <laughs> she's, she's really interested in these, and I'll hold up one of the red tokens. Maybe if you can give us some information on these. Look, I'm trying to help you here. If you can't give us anything good, my brother will just... All right, I so don't even know. Aerith, in your head, you just hear again say... In a moment, stop me. And then actually letting go of telepathy for a moment, out loud, Gen says, enough of this, sister. Let's do away with her. She has, she has nothing more for us. Stop. Just. He's like mid-stab. Yeah, she like grabs your hand. Just. What are you doing? Give her a moment. Okay. Go on. And she looks at her like, <laughs> like eyebrows up, like. She, uh... I'm offering you a lifeline here. She closes her eyes for a moment. And she opens them, and there, there are the, the, just the edge of, of, uh, of tears. And she says, I, if I told you what those were about, I would be deader than, than you could make me. And I, I think that we all know that there's only one way out of here, and that's finding this, this former agent. So, I mean, we can, you're, you're, we, you're not, you're not going to take me with you. Look, if you're willing to help us, I can personally assure your safety if you fight by our side and I can bring you out of here. If you help us, we can help you out. If you don't help us, then you are dead. That she seems to consider it for a moment. That that certainly seems to be the the situation. Um, the let, the, let the, me help the, you. The the only other side to it is that if I if I do help you, I'm I'm dead as well. 
and I need everyone to make a dex save because she is going to cast Fairy Fire because it's the only thing that she has memorized that's verbal only. <laughs> oh, fuck! You've got her. She's talking to her yeah, mentally. Yeah, she can't. God, she can't do it. <laughs> she <laughs> cannot do she, it. You hear her try to cast Fairy Fire through the gag, but you've been talking for so long. She herself, like me, has forgotten that she is not actually speaking... Uh, Speaking out loud, and once she realizes the jig on that is up, she she looks really sheepishly at you. <laughs> I actually hold, I let like release Gen's hand just for a second, so the knife goes in just slightly, and then I grip it again. You see her wince, and she's trying her best to clamp it off. The those coins represent something that's bigger than all of us. It, if I tell you. I'm I'm deader than you can make me, and and I would you say can uh, live. Uh... <laughs> she's oh, like, man, I, I, she's I really... talking to her like she's a child now. She's like, you can live if you tell us. <laughs> you can live. Uh... You just you just don't know. Go ahead and let him finish. You just don't know. <sighs> Again, make it slow. Make it hurt. Hopefully she'll come see sense soon. I mean, she's on like one half HP, so it ain't going to be that slow. <laughs> Bring out the tiny needles and do acupuncture on her. <laughs> uh, have you been telling anyone else in the party about uh, anything that's going on? Or is this all still not locked yet? In? Okay. Good. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I mean, there are things that <laughs> maybe could help this, but nobody knows them. So um, make a, make a, Aerith, make a... Make a perception check yourself, please. Okay. I shall. Um, that is a 17. You remember that just moments ago, Riala did give you some information, the tiniest bit of information on the coins and, and who they probably are tied to. Okay. Um, goodness, how does one pronounce that, Raven? <laughs> Zentarum. Zentarum, okay. Look. And I would say that it, it, you would know who the Zentarum are, and she's not lying. If she helps you in any way, especially dealing with that, she will be more dead than, than any of you can make her. So you've pretty much put her in a lose-lose situation. Help us and die, or don't help us and die. Help us and leave! <laughs> I will protect you! <laughs> Not from the Zentarum, you won't. <laughs> Kasha. <sighs> okay. Look. Can you give us anything of value, information-wise? I want to help you. Anything you can think of that could help us. I understand about the Zentarum. She, I she, want her, to her help eyes, you. her eyes snap to you like fast, 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 fast when you say that, and there's a there's a shock look on her face. Um, and you can tell she, she's racking her brain trying to think of something to tell you. Um. Uh, I don't know if I know anything helpful. Soren is... Soren is smart. He's devilish. He will let you do all of the work if he can. Are you telepathically keeping Gen clued in at this point? Yeah, well? yeah. Yeah, Gen would, would also telepathically message you. It's a stalemate at this point. Mm. She's not going to do anything but lie to you to preserve herself. Mm, roll an insight, uh, Aerith. Roll an insight on what she just said. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think she's lying. Um, but I'll see if she picks up anything. Um, yeah, with a thirteen, you're, it's kind of middle of the road with the thirteen. Yeah, just, um, I'm not really sure. <sighs> I mean, what I will say is, you you have observed him letting everyone, let all of his, the people work for him, do all the work. You've not seen, yeah. in the little bit you've seen him, you've not seen him cast a spell. 
You've not seen him draw a blade. Yeah. That's why I wanted to know if he had other people with him. Um, okay. Well, she did say there, there are people that aren't here in the glade with you that are yeah. unaccounted for. Just how many are there that could be with him, possibly? Just give me that. Well, she she kind of looks over again. Well, there there are two more that 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 aren't that aren't here. We'd sent them into town to. And then she slowly looks over at the keg of beer. To to get beer. Is she starting to have the epiphany of the fact that you probably have met the other two already? Yeah. And Aerith will stand up and will just nod to Gen. She's going to leave it up to him. Gen is going to draw a psychic blade and stab her with it. Uh, all right. Do you you want to give me any other specifics on that, or is it just a, a quick and? Nope. Just just as you might imagine, it just appears in his hand uh, with a quick little flourish of his fingers, and then he just plunges it into her while she's tied up and into her chest. Uh, uh. sorry. Go on. Would I, I? I assume I would get all the advantage and everything on that. She, she's tied up. I mean, yeah, yeah. She's tied up with like one half hit point. So, yeah. I, do I even need to roll? Then no. That oh no 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 no. She is yeah. she is dispatched. I will. While Gen does this, Aerith isn't gonna watch while he does it, but she's gonna go over to the others and just fill them in on everything that she said the gist of it um as you're coming over to the others you notice raven over to the side uh raven has has put actions into the roll 20 chat so raven do you want to uh describe for them what they see uh raven had gotten tired of not knowing what was going on she was ready to just dispatch of the druidus but instead, sheathed her blade and walked back to the wizard, still having some animosity with the wizard <laughs> and his brothers, and decided to search him. And by that, I mean literally just, yeah, he's uh he's down to his skivvies and is being hung from a tree, so that anybody will know that uh, you know, don't don't mess with whoever did this to him. Leaving a message for Soren, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, Riala, how's it looking? Coming into the demiplane with all these people now, suddenly. <laughs> Who have I gotten myself involved with? Goodness. <laughs> also, uh, I forgot to ask, um, how long have we been gone before you uh, came in? Was it hours? Uh... Oh, that's a good question, DM. So the from from the party's perspective, you've been here in Wisteria Vale a little over an hour, almost as much as an hour and a half. Um, Riala, from your perspective and hearing from when they left from from Sarah, it, it was you know a, a little over four hours or so um outside i mean you had time to to kind of debrief and have yourself a short rest and to read the play uh and and talk things over it um it, it, you would guess that it's been, it was in the real world about four four and a half hours maybe uh after hearing of the conversation between Aerith, uh gen and the unfortunate uh we shall <laughs> we shall call her um well you know um sometimes when uh you're looking for something well you just go to where it's always going to be and i sort of look around the the area we may not know exactly when but uh it's 
pretty apparent Soren will probably come back here. Uh, I'm not, uh, Rial, I'm not sure what the timing is looking or if it is a major pressing concern, but perhaps we set a trap? Perhaps we uh, lay in wait for him to come back here? I was actually thinking the same thing, although I don't know the relationship between Soren and these people. Do we know for sure he'll come back or do we think he might have gone off on his own? She okay. did say that she thinks he will come back eventually. And it doesn't sound like there could, there might not be anyone with him, but there could be. And when, uh, when we talked to the folks in town, uh, they'd let us know that, um, uh, Quill had been here, um, frequent, uh, frequently had been here in that drinking establishment, but that this, uh, this new, uh, person, we're assuming Soren, came to town and, uh, took him somewhere else. Uh, so I suppose the question is, do you think he's trying to do what we should be doing uh, currently? Uh, and, and should we actively look for him? We've got to get to Quill before Soren does. That is of utmost importance. Oh. If Soren gets him first, we're well, in trouble. So we had a conversation uh, with, with a couple of people in town. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, DM, but... Uh, did they not say that they had already met up and they had totally like... Oh, I don't know. What do your notes say? My notes said that they had met and uh, that they had already made contact, uh, or at least Soren had already made contact with Quill. That, uh, that is a, a version of it, yes. It's hard for me. I I I yes, I, yes. I put things in in couched ways last week, and so if I if I tell you exactly Soren, what it yeah, was, it may uncouch some of it. Soren wasn't the name that he was using. It was a different name. Um, that may not have made the notes, but it was a different name that, that he was. Different using. name was Rene. Renee, yes, a character named Renee, new to town, came by and uh, swept Quill away. Um, well, as you can tell, time is different here. Uh, and when I talked to them, uh, the, the spread of time was days, hours uh, between when they got here and when we got here. Um, so, uh, sorry, Riala, but I'm not sure where they would be, but I'm pretty sure this Renee character is already taking Quill somewhere. That's probably a problem. Um, do I know, DM, because the notes that I have, I, I know that Soren, Quill, and Sarah were friends. Mm -hmm. Um. Would I, in my conversation back there, have determined if they had a falling out, like what their current? Yeah, um, sort and of... I, and I would say the rest of the party w would know that as well. That the 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 uh, uh, Sarah had talked about that when they when they first came back in the first game, you were absent. Um, that they they had all worked together and they were friends, and Soren started kind of wanting and, and thirsting for more and so he was they kind of distanced him a little bit but then he would kind of come to his senses and come back he was he's always kind of a like a like a feast or famine kind of thing he's mm -hmm. he's really hot and then he's really cold he's back and forth and then when that happened with quill everyone thought that quill would kind of pull back to his normal nature and then he didn't and they kind of understood the depth of of the curse that was upon him. Um, Soren though, it's just in his nature to be, to, to be, you know, up and down like that. Seemingly you don't, you did not get the sense any of you that they are on friendly terms, but she never expected him to pull something like this. So do we have the sense that Soren has malicious intent 
then? You know, Sarah doesn't know. She okay. was she was shocked that he was leading the raid. And but we she, don't really know his motivations. Right. She she's full of speculations and she's only leaked a little bit of that out, not wanting to kind of color the situation. Right, right. Okay. Um can all five of you, while this is taking place, roll a perception check for me, please? Dirty <laughs> twenty. Ten. So, 38. Everyone but Aerith. So while you're having this conversation, the... So everyone, including Aerith, suddenly you notice just the... the... the, the uh, that acrid kind of smell of, of burning brimstone just pervading the area, and it's just... it is just in your nose, and it, this that awful smell of brimstone is everywhere. And everyone except Aerith, the, just the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you suddenly feel like someone is watching you. It, it's a palpable, you all, you're discussing, you're talking and you all stop dead. And Aerith is like, what? It's just the brimstone that happened earlier. What? But, but the, the, problem, the other, the other four of you absolutely feel like someone's watching you. Do you sense Would... that? I do. Yes. Acutely. Um, Would it be akin to, uh, as Sledge would see it, the uh, scrying or... Uh, the only thing he would use it for, of course, is to look up reviews for the, the best workout places, but... Uh, <laughs> Make Would an Arcana be... check, please. Uh, all right. <laughs> Make an Arcana check with advantage. Uh, where is it? There it is. Um, I'm gonna have to roll it twice. Every time I try to do advantage, it acts funny. So that's there right. you go. Yeah, Ooh. with a, with a twenty four, it uh, yeah it it to you feels exactly like scrying wood. And you don't know if maybe that's heightened by the place that you're in, because normally that's it's just an invisible sensor that you wouldn't pick up upon. But this is a weird place. And so you feel like maybe just the magics and stuff and, and the, the construction of this place is kind of cluing you into that. Um, as soon as that registers, uh, I know you guys feel that, but... Well, I'm pretty sure whoever is looking knows exactly what's happening. And I'm wondering if all of those other occurrences were them looking in. I think we can assume that, uh, well, anything that we know, they know. In which case, they won't be coming back. Uh, I was going to say, I presume that uh, Soren being the smart man he, that, that everyone keeps talking that he is, that probably he had left these people here behind, so that way he had more time to get away, so that we dispatch them, because he did not care for them, as they were just, uh, what, what did that note say there, Sledge, that you found on that one gentleman back in the keep? Well, let's, let's just say that I... I believe these are the B squad. Uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, you don't remember I mean, what it said, do you? I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I was putting him on the spot for that for you. You did. Yeah. I, I like that. It, and I love the no, the it. note said, uh, "Not all of us, just the livestock." Livestock. Oh, I try to put these painful memories behind me. You know that. Um, uh, it, do we? Is this thing still going? Do we still feel it? Uh, yeah, and, and the the uh, you feel it. It's not as kind of like intense as it is at once as it as it was to start with. Um, and the the brimstone smell begins to kind of like fade away. Uh, but you still have that that little sense of of that of the of the being watched. 
Hmm. Like, I don't know where the sensor is, but I'm, uh, you know, just going to gesture at the uh, now hung for it from, from a tree wizard and uh, just look back as a, like, you know, your next kind of look. <laughs> I love it. God, I'm so mad that you already have inspiration because I would have given it to you for that. <laughs> you guys, you guys are pulling some great RP tonight. Um. Uh, yeah. So you 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 can expect that everything that you have said and that you know is is known to someone. You don't know whom. Maybe it's Soren. Maybe it's uh, Sarah reading the book and she can see what's happening. Better to assume that it's Soren and he knows what we're up to. Uh, or or Quill. Uh, I mean, I would assume that the prisoner wouldn't necessarily know his surroundings. But... I'm not really one for those types of spell workings, but don't you have to know something about who you're looking at? He's trying on the area, maybe? Or friends? Well... <clears throat> Um, if I use that previous arcana check, uh, <laughs> I could tell you a lot about uh, what you need to know about Scry. My magic is divine. I know nothing about this book stuff. Uh, yeah, well, you, um, you know that hanging in a tree next to you all is someone who Soren presumably knew very well. Yes, my, my point was that um, Quill might not be the one looking because he would he know any of us or no? Oh, oh, I look. see, I see, I see, Quill. Um, like we could maybe potentially eliminate him as someone who might be... Everyone, everyone, just because it's been a few days ago that, uh, like honestly, it's been weeks ago for us, but it was earlier yesterday that uh, she talked to you about it. Everybody roll a history check for me. And let's see if you guys remember something. Sixteen. Seven. Fourteen. Sorry, nineteen. Um, I forgot that too. So uh, seven. Yes, uh, I mean, Sledge is crushing it tonight. Um, so you remember that. Uh, Sarah had said Quill is a bard and you know that you'd have to be a really high level bard to have scrying um, Quill doesn't work out nearly as hard as I do no way <clears throat> no way does he have that <laughs> uh, now this Soren fellow maybe um, so uh, <clears throat> kind of looking around um uh, da, 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 da. Um, well, uh, it really comes down to if we don't have time to wait, uh, I guess forward, but where we, we've sort of been around the town. I real, I know you had to run up here. Uh, the people yeah. are pretty, pretty strange, but in general, uh, pretty Easy going. Um, doesn't seem to have much to hide. Uh, but I don't know where do you guys uh, and I have sort of gesture to Gen, uh, Raven, and Aerith. Did you see anything out here that uh, I didn't? Uh, remember, you sort of all just disappeared on me. I guess we could also check all these bodies just to see if there's anything on them of. Nothing of pertinence was left on these one on these bodies, though. Out of curiosity, as I had a friend who was able to do it before, uh, could you uh, provide us with a, uh, a a very hearty feast, or do you not have that uh, at the moment? I think I'm asking if your character has hero's feast prepared. <laughs> You want to eat at a time like this? I have burned oh. a lot of calories. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. That druid might have some berries you can have. No, but she 
she did have, and I'll now I'll bring to the light of everybody this, and I hold a bejeweled chalice in my hand, which may or may not be worth enough to make a hero's feast out of. Which made me just made me curious since she had it on her. I figured, why put the why not put to good use if we can make use of it, or worst case we can save it for later and just you know get money for it. But I figured I'd put it the option to benefit everybody. Really looking at it, you 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 would say pretty expertly that having cast Heroes Feast in the past, that that, that would be worth enough, uh, worth the thousand gold pieces to to be the reagent for Heroes Feast. I'm at a dirty 20 on, on jeweler's tools. I could also tell you it's worth a thousand gold. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you had jeweler's tools. Yeah, I'm, I'm like the, the, the multi-purpose everything almost, <laughs> as far as ninja stuff goes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I would need to get a lot of rest and say a lot of prayers mm. to be able to use that for making a feast, and I don't know if we have that kind of time. Well, given the recent event um, and being watched and Sledge sort of uh, <laughs> gestures up, um, really, it's now just a matter of uh, trying to pick up the trail, uh, trying to pick up some Something. Did you pick up any other clues in town? Nothing. Well, there is the uh, the inn, the uh, the drinking establishment. Uh, that was some place that Quill frequented a lot, apparently, um, and that's where this Renee person actually uh, found him. So that might be a good place to start. Problem is, I could do with a rest, but the moment that. Soren sees what we did here he's going to probably up his game, up his guard whereas I've... at the moment we could be wasting an opportunity where he might be alone I think it's safe to say he already knows, I don't know who else would have been scrying on us which means time is not on our side he knows we're here, he knows we're on the trail I also agree um, both those points uh, <laughs> uh, you know this doesn't just happen. It requires rest and relaxation. But uh, I do agree with you, uh, Riala. It, the um, since he knows we're here, we're assuming it's Sword. Uh, since he knows we're here, he will be moving towards his goal very quickly, um, which does put us a bit under the under the pressure. Uh, it, we should keep the same pace. The uh, a very light rain begins to fall, as you all notice that you've been talking for quite a while, and the sky is actually darkening. It, it's it's starting to get kind of into evening. Um, Aerith, roll a roll a perception to remember something that the druid said to you. Oh, ten. It's it is it is raining. It's that's what you perceive is that it's raining. It is raining. Oh, guys, it's raining. Then again, I did pass on everything that she said to the group, so I don't know whether they would be able to roll, maybe, but... Uh, okay, so then I'll let the, the other four it's of you... It's raining. I'll let the other four of you roll a perception, then, uh, based on the the fact that she told you everything. Teamwork, perception? I love it. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So that's a that's a, that's a a 30 on a nat 20. Um, <laughs> I had a 26. Uh, so then, then I will say that... Both Gin and Riala and Raven all remember that Aerith said one of the last things she said was that Soren would let someone else do all the work. Which is funny because I was going to make a mention of So I, I yeah. would say just throw that into your decision making process is that Will he come after you? Will he let you do the work and then swoop in at the end and take the prize? Now, when we think of of work uh, in this particular case, uh, 
Oh, we just got another raid from uh, nice. Thor Gang. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, we have a. Uh, we're getting pretty close to our break here, but we are running a giveaway, uh, exclamation mark giveaway, to get entered for a fifteen dollars gift card for CrackandDice.com. Nice. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, given that, if we look at the scope of work here, to my knowledge, it's stabbing quill right is is that as a uh, as sledge is starting to speak some of his words uh raven just moves up and puts a hand upon his his mouth <laughs> Shush. and then i just look at him like i, I point to my forehead and point to, to his Can we stop letting him know do what you did <laughs> earlier what, right. is, what does this this mean? What does, can what I go ahead and thing? can I go ahead and recast my uh, telepathic network to include everyone here? Yes, you may. Right. Sle yeah, Sledge is literally like, "All oh, right," he starts to crack his knuckles. He's like, "Okay," oh. and then Gen makes it much easier for everyone. <laughs> Sound like whispers. Let's see. Well, you can only do up to your proficiency for amount of people you can get it onto. Yeah, but that's 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 four, and there are four mm -hmm. other people here, so. Right well, now, so I can leave out uh, Narcissus for a little while since she's a little messed up. I was just trying to help you from being a switchboard. Yeah, that's you don't you need hear. to hear that the whole time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Just leave me. Uh, I'll be fine. Is that? Psychic whispers. Okay. Ah, so this time I have to expend a psionic energy die to use mm -hmm. it, but I believe it is a D10, yeah? All right. So for the next nine hours, we can all communicate with me. Excellent. Uh, so it's starting to get evening. It's you guys are in the forest. It's a very gentle light rain that just suddenly out of nowhere stops. Um, the um, it's starting to get dark. You, you guys are a little low on resources. What you want to do? Head back to town. Yeah, uh, and mentally, as we, I agree, yeah. as we start walking uh, that direction, uh, mentally kind of <laughs> uh, ping-ponging uh, off of Gen, who then, like, doo -doo -doo, you know, uh, uh, shoots it out. Um, well, as, as I was saying, uh, if we think of the work to be done, well, we were sent here to get Quill, and... Uh, that requires this dagger. Um, so if he is Soren, that is, if he's wanting us to do all the work, why is he making it so hard to find Quill then? Is he, does he, do, do we know if he knows where Quill is or is he waiting for us to find him? Possibility is your Renee person might not be Soren. No, well, and then we have a third player, and that's the D that's even the, more scary. That's book, not something that the DM would do, is it? A third like, player? When, when uh, Riala read the book, did you happen to see any notations of a Rene or anybody of similar name written in there by chance, in case it was something written prior no, in the story? The, the play had completely different names. It's, you know... I. A fictional representation that seems mm. to align very closely with what is happening, but no, the names did not match a Rene at all. Well, since it is getting later in the day, why not take the rest so that way a lot of you can regain a lot of your power? I mean, yes, it means that Soren will also get back some amount, but he is one person while we are many. And if he's just waiting for us to do the work, mm -hmm. then we might as well take the time to be at full strength. Mm -hmm. We can go mm -hmm. back to the inn in town, maybe have a few drinks, ask some questions, get some sleep tonight. Yes, I'd like to investigate there as soon as possible. It, I did tell the, uh, the the merchant I'd be back for for a free sample. That was probably like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> 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 Gotta go kill some people. CRB. <laughs> Um, uh all right excellent. so do you, do you guys want to make your way then back to uh the uh, blossoms rest the tavern yes 
Uh, all right. So I will say that you guys can get back there. It is uh, the building here by my ping where Ulrich is uh, is outside of it. Oh, I'm sorry. Sledge was uh, looking at the trees. Uh... <laughs> and As, uh, Abs Ray... just runs up on Ulrich and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Abzer Abzerham walks up like you know assuming this is like a, a club right and um he just knows that he's on the list you know like he doesn't he just goes past the the red uh barrier you know there is no <laughs> exactly exactly, Riel, exactly well when you see no barrier you cast one and then just like yes. push it to the yeah. side let me get this out of my way um uh, Just swing by for my my uh, free sample. Uh, yeah. So, are you uh, are any of you like covered in the blood of these people that you've killed? I am. I'm, I am completely cleansed yeah. of it. Most definitely. I only don't. I was gonna say, Aerith, that like kill she had. There's no way she's not got blood on I her. Only, I only dealt psychic damage, so don't think so. As we're, as will, we're, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll say, uh, did you see that Raven holds hold, uh, her hand to her up, up around her neck as though like, she's holding a stone or a necklace or something? And then a moment later, all the anything that was dexterous that was on her is now gone. And then she looks at Eret. Do you need the use of this? Uh, I have a means, but not something I cast, but something I have upon myself to help keep one cleaned of all the gore and everything that we've gone through. If you wouldn't mind, because I feel like I'll stand out quite a lot. I mean, so. magic murder hobo soap on a rope is a business that we need to go into, like, right now. <laughs> you can have that. I have this nice little clen this little pendant right here. It happens to do that. And it's on, it's on a necklace. And as she draws out a, a necklace from around her neck, it's the stone necklace of a, a raven sitting upon a crested moon. <laughs> Raven with a straw, just drinking blood. <laughs> That's the other side. <laughs> <laughs> the vampire Ravens. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, now we're in Ravenloft. Uh, the crossover event you've all been waiting crossover for. Crossover <laughs> event you've all been waiting for. So let's see, I'm still missing uh, Riala and Aerith from, uh, from the town square. Yes, you have to. It's a run. Riala's like, I just got here. Like, what? She's like, I literally just ran all the way into the woods just to turn around and come back. I ran <laughs> by that building. Like, what? Um, so, Riala, make a perception check. Oh, that's not great. Um, 11, I think. Yeah. You you know what? Even with an eleven, you uh, you see that that Raven has has pulled off and is is over here in kind of the Merchant Square, and you uh, you hear this gentleman here when he sees Raven say, "Ah, oh, brah, Shaka, yeah, let's get some drinks," and you have immediate. Uh, he comes back over to his table, and uh, he has pulled some samples out. You have immediate recollection that he sounds and looks exactly like Mick Featherlight, who you met some short time ago dealing with uh, with another Candlekeep adventure. I'm going to walk over there. Okay. Uh, how did you end up here? Oh, hey, Shaka, uh, can I get you a sample? Uh, I, I had some friends with a wagon that, that dropped me and the beer off and I like sold the beer out record time. So I guess I'll just wait here till, till tomorrow when they come back to, to get me. Uh, how did you get here? Do you, do you, do you remember me? No, but I, I, I mean, I do sell beer and. And the end, you drink, drink a lot of I, it. Too. I drink, yeah. I drink it sometimes too. And I mean, 
but but uh, you know, a shaka, you know, shaka. It happens. Yeah, shaka. Yeah, you know, you people don't really use that as a word. Oh, shaka. Yeah, <laughs> bruh. Yeah. Oh. Make Can another. Per, make another. Make another perception check with it. Well, say what you were gonna say. Well, I was going to ask for insight, but... Yeah, roll an, in, roll, roll an insight. Roll an insight. Um, let's see. Dirty 20. This is... a pre-programmed demiplane. Um, probably this guy is who you met but probably a a much earlier version of him that was created Just like to be a copy yeah so while you recognize him from a recent thing he is part of this the matrix play he's part of this matrix th this play that that they have programmed to 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 be here for for quill um and um and yeah, so he does not know you, but and he is not being disingenuous at all. Right. Okay. Though, I mean, he thinks maybe he did get drunk and forget you, but <laughs> that happens so much that he's just kind of moved Plausible. on from that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, sample. Sure, sure. Sample. Yeah, it shaka. is. It's it, shaka. Uh, it's not real good. You you understand why. Narcissus probably doesn't feel well. It could be the quantity that she drank because the the four of them had put down like nearly two gallons of beer like in a short time. So maybe the quantity, but it's also I mean, it's it's like an IPA. It's kind of tastes like butt. <laughs> mm, Hashtag yeah, nice. I hate IPAs. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Tell us how you really feel, please. Uh... Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah. so. Oh. So I think what we're gonna do is, uh, since we're 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 kind of in the town square, the murdering is over for now. Uh, Sledge, I was going to say, um, speaking of our good friend Leon, well, half Leon, half Narcissus. Uh, I assume we did uh, escort her and her throwing up self with us, so she's not yeah, in the she, middle of the woods. She she ha she actually hasn't been like actually vomiting. She's just Ooh. real. She's on the edge. She's like, oh, no, everything's fine. I think and Sledge like is, and you step back and at any moment and it's like okay everything's fine. You move her a little respect further. Respect level is like going up. I'm like that takes that takes some serious core work, you know. Oh and yeah, you gotta you gotta want that. So yeah, you know, for, good for sure. Yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, you didn't you did not leave her in the forest where you just killed everyone. You uh, <laughs> what what is going on with Narcissus? Well, she was drinking some of the beverages while she was talking up the uh, the guys in the woods, and um, but now she's. Why does she look like that? Oh, you mean Leon? She changed her. She. What's the best way to put it? Um, we were going to talk to them, um, but then. But then you chose violence. I didn't even know where they were. Okay, I had to. I had to slide against a tree. It was. <laughs> I had to. She, I she had to. to. She spoke with them, but we were getting nowhere. So we decided that violence was the only option. Sometimes it's the. Listen. Sometimes it's the answer. No judgment here. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose the thug life. The thug life chose me. Hey. <laughs> and with that. That was perfect. <laughs> well, you know, I was about to type it in Zoom, but I'll just say it out loud since we're going to take a break here. I I love that uh, that 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 Riala asked for the how, and everyone retorted with the why. <laughs> uh, and with that, since we're all safely back in the safely back in the town, uh, we're going to take a ten minute bio break. You all have made it back to um, kind of the the town common area. And uh, had a little bit of the sample beer that is not very good. Um, what some of you noticed the first time or, or earlier before you went into the forest was that there's just not a whole lot of people here. I mean, it is a small little village, but, well, you know, it's still just not a lot of people. You'd think there'd be more people. Um, so with that, I will switch the maps and turn it over 
to you all. Uh, so you, there's uh, Mickey who is at the table who has just the the uh, just a few samples left of the of the beer. Um, Evie was the other merchant who you all just totally blew past and didn't have any of her wares. Daphne, uh, maybe Narcissus knows, but but she would have told you all. Daphne uh, and Ulrich are both in the. Um, are both uh, the owners and the proprietors of the um, the Blossoms Rest, which is the this building here. It's their their tavern and uh, and inn. So I will let you all take it away. I would say that we sent Narcissus to bed. Yeah, so we'll we'll say that that you you all talked to uh, to Ulrich and Daphne and got a. You gotta, they don't have a, a lot of rooms again small town but but they do have a, a kind of a larger one and um he, he he let you guys rent that real cheap it was only two silver for the night and um he felt bad that 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 she that she was feeling under the weather and you guys took her up there and put her to bed and uh that is where she is and if we end up on, back on that part of the map I'll delete her token but I don't think we'll be back over there I'll, uh, I'll pay for her room. Uh, yeah, it's two silver for the whole, the whole lot of you for the one big room. I mean, it's it's not is it is not fancy. You you have been to some real crap holes, and this is not a crap hole, but it is not fancy. Um, it's kind of like the IKEA of hotels. Um, but you are all uh, free to free to chat. Within the inn itself, um, mm -hmm. which I apologize, a, I, there's not a map for. I wish there were, but there is not. Uh, what patrons are there, sparse though they uh, may be? So there's there's no one in. Uh, they they had been hoping that uh, the quill was going to come by and play, but um, he he's not been by yet. Just like he hasn't been in, you know, like a couple of weeks. And so there were there were a few folks there that had all kind of meandered out. So they didn't tell you how many folks were there, but but you know that whoever was there had left by the time you guys got there. Anna's gonna go up to the bar and uh, order a drink if he can, and then just sort of start asking these questions about this Renee person, see if he can get a description of him, and if he matches what he remembers Soren looked like. Hmm. Okay. Um. So the um, uh, Ulrich uh, goes inside and 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 pours you a pours you a beer. Uh, ah, yeah, Renee, he's a he's a strange looking fella. He, I don't know. I just always feel like I always feel like he's looking at me, no matter no matter where I am or what I'm doing. If if he's in the room with me, I just always feel like he's looking at me. Uh, but uh, you, you know it's, it's not my place people live here they don't live here it's not my place to judge uh, I just I, it just makes me feel weird hmm. can I get you something else is that is that beer okay it's good thank you he hasn't had any yet um <laughs> Earth as well was like, it's saying, great. She hasn't had anything to drink all year since <laughs> she's been here. You said he makes you feel strange, but uh, what did he look like? Uh, not a not a tall fella. Uh, he's probably only I don't know, for, uh, maybe four and a half, four and a half, five feet to the top of the head. He uh, got a real kind of sallow gray skin. Uh, no beard or nothing. Uh. It, it has a, a really kind of wicked smile. It's at this point that Gen is going to telepathically tell everyone else. As far as I can tell, he didn't look anything like Soren. Yeah, from from you actually saw him, saw who you think is Soren. So yeah, he nothing about the description fits that. No. Soren Soren is you know almost yeah. six feet no, and I... older human, so Mentally back, um, <clears throat> well, could it be similar to uh, our friend's ability uh, to 
hide herself, uh, speaking about uh, Narcissus's ability to change her appearance. Possible. I know that doesn't help, but it is something we have to keep in mind. Um, he could easily have changed himself. Entirely possible. Or it could be another example of Soren using someone else to do his dirty work. Excellent point. Excellent point, Ken. I'm upset that you all have inspiration already. <laughs> uh... Uh, 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 excuse me, and or will go out. So he's got a couple of other drinks in his hand. He'll go outside, and and um, you see that he brings a, a drink over to Evie and to Daphne. And so they, no one's really in the bar. They've kind of the party's just out here in the in the middle of the square a little bit. They've some there's some lanterns lit, and it's um, you know, it's nice. Um, are you still this... in a place that weirds you out? pretty heavily but this might be a, a long shot but <clears throat> when we encountered the group right before uh soren's group i'm sorry in candlekeep right before they entered <clears throat> and apparently used the book mm -hmm. um i had seen the wall of force put up um would i have any recollection if what gan is sort of describing as as the the visual of renee was that person part of that group at all? Would I have happened to have seen that as they ran into the, the room or not? Um, I would say that the the people that you saw in Candlekeep, you have pretty well accounted for with toe tags here, with the exception of Soren. Understood. Understood. Yeah, there was nobody that had pale gray skin. That was amongst the group. At least not but, from what I've seen now in the courtyard. It seems Soren works quickly if he's already recruiting people from from here. It's or like, it's someone completely unrelated. Again, why don't you inquire if this gray-skinned fellow had uh, extraordinary long arms? I've, I've come across a creature that had uh, really long arms that could also change his face. Again, we'll lean in. Uh, you have to go outside. Thing. If you want to talk to Ulrich, you'll have to move outside because he's outside with the ladies now. Uh, fine. All right. Yeah, he'll go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Most unconventional uh, information gathering ever. He will go outside. Oh, hey, oh, still, still liking that beer? It's uh, yeah. it's it's not as fancy as Mickey's, but uh, but but it's good. Uh, yes, I, well, I don't need that fancy stuff anyway. Just uh, yeah, yeah, me neither. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, one last thing about uh, Renee. Did you happen to notice anything about his arms? Especially their length? Mm -mm. No, I mean, I guess they seem like normal normal arms for, for somebody that of that stature, I guess. I mean, short if you're a tall fella, but I mean, long if you were like a little, a little, a little harpy or something. Right, right, right. I understand, old Frank. Thank you. Well, uh, right, you have a good day, or evening. Oh, well, uh, you, you as well, you as well. Here we um, go Ria inside. Riala, as so you'll go back into the, into the tavern? Yeah. Riala, so are you over still with uh, Raven at Mickey's table? Making chat? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, you catch... And and Raven, you see this as well, but it is not the first time, so it is less. You mm -hmm. you you don't care as much about it happening. Um, Riala, this tree right here. Just it's as though all of the color. Just drains out of it, and it is, like like a black and white drawing 
almost for all intents and purposes. Do you see that? That's what I was describing. What? Yes, there seems something here is messing with it, I think. It's been... Can I uh, approach point, the I point up to the, to the sky. You see, it stopped raining almost immediately after we got back into town. I presume that's correct, right, my buddy? Uh, yeah, yeah. When you guys kind of broke the forest line and, and were mm -hmm. on the way back, the rain, the rain stopped. Mm -hmm. Can I approach the tree? Sure. And I guess, like, I want to look at it and see if there's anything, like, weird about it. If it right. seems make, like... Make, a, make an investigation check. What's going on? I, I lean over to Mickey and just switch the phone. So, where do you keep the, uh, the good stuff that you were uh, saying, you were gesturing earlier of? Oh. This... Shaka, dude, this is the good stuff, man. Uh, the other, the, the, I, I only sell good stuff. Oh. Sixteen. <laughs> uh, do you do you reach out and touch the tree? Yeah. It it is just like a tree. I mean, it, it's the 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 branch moves and the 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 leaves on the 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 branch move, and it, it for all intents and purposes <laughs> is a tree, except it has no coloration it is it is like a black and white drawing it kind of like it's drawn here on this map that's provided with the assets that you buy uh we're not going to go back into that tirade i had last week uh the, the bright and vibrant color <laughs> yeah the, the book uh, specifically says that mystery veil is bright and vibrant and then this is the map that comes with it it's like yep. you uh, but for all intents and purposes, it is a tree like all of the other trees around. It just has no color. And it's only this singular tree? Uh, from from your vantage point, it is only that singular tree, yes. Weird. Very weird. I wonder if whoever's controlling this demiplane is starting to lose control? Maybe that's why they want us to get Quill out, because they can't contain him any longer. Yes, and we, between the storms and the colorations, um, and uh, looking around, Sledge is sort of <clears throat> nervously like, I agree. I, I think this might be the, the prison breaking down, the, this, this plane uh, not being able to contain Quill any longer, or perhaps Soren has already started whatever it is he's doing in here. Are you looking uh, at trying the... Trying to destroy it from the inside out. Are you... Uh... Looking at uh, Raven, that absolutely happens. Um, are you looking <laughs> at the at the tree as well, Sledge? Uh, yes. I mean, we've seen this. Um... So a as you're talking to her about you know the, not being able to contain him, or maybe maybe Soren's doing his thing. Like from the core of the tree, the color just begins to seep back into it, and within a matter of seconds, it is fully fully colored just like all of the other trees it, it it looks just like the others and it, Riala, if you're still there and and touch it, it it still feels exactly like it had previously and and like a tree raven you said you went for a little run earlier did you run east to west or north to south ah uh, from from the east further east which would eventually become west because and it all seemed to be enclosed in here, so only about 30 seconds worth of running. It was like a brisk little walk, almost. But that's 30 seconds of monk running, which is like <laughs> two hours of regular person running. Uh, yeah. when, when, you, when you ran, there, there, seemed, there was nothing that you picked up that would tell you, oh, I'm at the flip point or the break point. It, it, to you, Raven, as you ran through, was seamless and, and perfectly continuous. Would you 
Do you have it in you to make another run? Perhaps the opposite direction and see what happens? It's easy enough. You're not going to try to time me like Sledge was allegedly trying to do. Sledge is like, one, two. I've already started this time. Uh, (laughs) I just want to know if it's a loop in all directions. You know what I mean? Because then there's only so many places Quill could be. Well, I I did jokingly say, give give me two to three minutes to run around here. (laughs) It's like the clock's already ticking. And unmap all the fog of war. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. That wasn't really my intention, but sure. I I threw that as a joking suggestion on that the other week. (laughs) I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I love where you're thinking. Tell me where you want to, tell me where where you want to start. As he's about to run, uh, Sledge is like, and all this before we even rested. Hint, hint. Uh, I am I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right, which which direction you want to go? You want to go from where right. you are to the west? Yeah, I'll do I'll do, you know, run to the, run through the west. And then presumably keep running until it, assuming that it, it does the same thing, I'm just gonna Keep going until I, you know, come back to the table with with Riala. Yeah, because my question was whichever way you went last time, if you went east west to do like north south this time to see, you know, like oh, we know, you want me to oh, reverse, like we know one east. way goes a circle, right? So does the other way well, also? Well, technically, if you, I, I thought the way you wanted me to do was like, you know, since I went east and I came out the west, that you would like me to go west to see if I still come out the east, and then also do the same thing from north to south, make sure that however much you want to run. <laughs> yeah, we're just here drinking crappy beer. You uh you run all you want. Mm-hmm. All right, so where do you which which way you want to go first? You want to go to the west first? Yeah, I'll, I'll do the uh the westward run. And you know, presumably I'm, I'm doing it so that way I I will come back if the line keeps it, you know, straight around that I should technically come back around and end up basically like right over here instead. Like I, so I basically left from one side of the table and come to the other side of the table by the end of the run on on this first go. Yeah. Presumably. Yeah. So I will, it, you can see that I've, uh, I'm, I'm clearing some of the fog away it, just mm-hmm. like it was before you, uh, you run across and mm-hmm. there's, there's no, it seems like perfect. You, you're running away from, uh, from Riala and Mickey. Um, and then you run, you're in the forest, you're in the forest, you're in the forest, you break free from the forest, and then you see Riala and Mickey, and you're suddenly mm-hmm. approaching them. That's really just... weird. Do you want to that do one? West to east. Do you feel normal? You feel okay? I mean, as far as I'm aware, I'm 100% fine. You just feel like you ran in a straight line? Yes. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. I mean, and then I, I, you know, would have, as I pass those people, I would just, you know, get, give them a friendly, like, you know, like, give them a courtesy wave, like, yeah, they, by them. <laughs> they, uh, it, it seems like they're, uh, maybe they had picked some stuff from the field and they're, mm-hmm. they're kind of sitting on the back porch and, and mm-hmm. just working on the, the harvest that they had, that they had picked. What, mm-hmm. uh, what, Aerith, what are you doing right now? Aerith is probably just keeping an eye on everything. Um, she's not really doing anything in particular. Okay. Just, just keeping watch, keeping an eye out. She's also just kind of um, looking for any unusual people or strange activity coming by. <laughs> well, you just saw a raven run like hell to we, the west there across. We've, uh, oh, we've had that before where we've gone through <laughs> one end and the other. Aerith at this point is like almost timing it in her head. Like She's just like... Mm. Someone weirder than your group. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, weird, weirder than us. Weirder than us. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so do you want to do a north-south try? Looking, looking around the town. Uh, mm-hmm. So we've got the inn uh, and these these various other kind of buildings. Are do any of them look like, um, like general housing, or is this more like uh, all kind of shops and stores? No, no, no. So the, I would say that kind of more on the outside you know kind of these specifically they look like 
you know, single family homes and uh, so some of the smaller ones are maybe more like, um, like, like large sheds. Uh, but like this certainly is a single family home and, um, it's not revealed to you. Yet. I mean, I could reveal it, but right over here is a single family home, um, it, it, you know, to go with these little small farms, uh, nice. out, out here in the middle, like the, you're not super sure what, what these are. They don't really have a tile out front. Well, I suppose uh, Sledge would kind of approach uh, Ulrich and kind of gesturing around to the, the town and, you know, the various kind of small homes. And, well, this is, you know, I, oh, I discussed uh, crop rotation with, with several uh, uh, people. Trina uh, and Morlan, I believe their names were. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice gals, nice gals. Amazing, amazing. Uh, now, one question this uh this quill i know he generally entertains he hasn't hasn't been around in a while but um well surely he has to live somewhere in this town it's it's pretty small uh do you know where his home is uh here um quill where he goes to when he's not yeah. here uh well yeah everybody knows where quill lives it's it's just up north in the manor Oh, I new to town. Uh, and uh, that's, you know what? You just, you, you got one of them faces that you, even though you're new, I feel like you've been here for a while. So I, that's, that's, that's my apology. I, well, it, I'm amazing to look at. Uh, so you said North and uh, if we just continue along this main path here, we'll, we'll get to uh, Quill's home. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Just, just right up there. I mean, you just, it ain't far. Um, so through the mental switchboard, um, I believe I have found where Quill at least lives when he isn't at the inn. That might be another lead we can check out. Yeah, we should probably check out his house, see if there's any, um, you know, if he left any signs of where he's gone or maybe he's just there chilling at home. Easy peasy, right? It, it could just be a matter of miscommunication. He could, he could just be hanging out this whole time. <laughs> Where y'all been? I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I sent a welcome party out to get you guys some beer, but I mean, they haven't been back in a while. Uh... <laughs> um, uh, all right. So do you all, uh, do y'all want to go check that out or do we want to Raven's keep... running one more time? I think Raven's doing one more lap. Mm -hmm. Well, Raven's is doing a lap. I think Sledge would also. Uh, I don't know if we should go there. So, uh, yeah, that's under... already that's already open to you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's over that way. Then up that um, you know, then north from there. I just I was just showing you the general idea. Oh, oh, I see. I see. You you're going to take that path yeah. up. I got gotcha. yeah, and see if it does do the uh, the, the circle about. Yeah, why don't you get yourself over there? And um Yeah, true is uh true is the other ones. <laughs> you uh you appear, you know, you run, you run, you run, mm -hmm. you appear, and you're right back uh right back here, kind of looking down the down the roadway to all of your friends over at the uh, at the marketplace. Ready. All right. Well, then I make my way back over to her once more, and I'm like, "Yep, same thing, in each direction." Interesting. So, do we want to? I know we've all had a long day. Do we want to check out Quill's house tonight, or do we want to get some rest first and worry about that in the morning? Aerith yells, sleep! <laughs> well, I would take it that we would probably take a rest because, hell, Soren is waiting, is going to be waiting for us to do things anyway, most likely. So yeah. why not uh, be at our fold? <laughs> All right. Okay. So y'all are going to go to the room that you paid for where Narcissus is? Yep. I'd mm -hmm. seen in the chat you guys had discussed maybe casting Tiny Hut in the room just to be safe mm -hmm. uh okay that uh 
that that happens. We uh, you 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 pull Narcissus over, and who who seems to be feeling better? Uh, she just is, is very sleepy. If um, it's right before bed, I'll go ahead and cast Lesser Restoration on her. Uh, yeah, it, it seems as though the the ill effects of the um of the the kind of skunky beer and, and it, it, you feel feel like maybe it was more the quantity in the short time. Uh, maybe was, she, was, maybe for a bard, she's not quite the drinker that she says she is. I was letting um, her suffer just in case I needed the spell slots, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you, you feel like that, uh, that she gets, she gets some sleep and, and she's probably fine in the morning, but not really. She's fine next week when she's back. So obviously, uh, okay. So yeah, you guys, you pull her, you cast hut and. Are you guys going to set a watch at all, or are you going to feel comfortable in the confines of, of Tiny Hut? Because, I mean, it's almost think, almost impenetrable. I think we watch it. <laughs> Don't make that face. Um, <laughs> yes, I agree. We should definitely uh, set, a, set a watch as well. There's also uh, the point that three of us are elves, so we only need four hours. Yes. True, true. So um, I'll go to bed. You guys cover the watches. Yeah. Sounds yes. Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, that sounds amazing. Let's see. One, two, three. We'll just elves. have the elves. We'll just have the elves all do the watches. Okay. Yeah. That is amazing. You know, I, I didn't want to say it, but since you've offered it, um... <laughs> oh, I said it. Now, how many beds are in here? In in tiny oh. hut zero. Oh. <laughs> Time to spoon, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'd like to, to think of there's a water wheel like on its side with some cushions on it and Sledge like spins it and he's like, ah, ah, spinning bed, huh? And uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm going to sleep, Riala. I don't know, but uh, there's a bed here. Um, I, I like that like, he just lays down in the middle like this. <laughs> Just Come pull get up, me, lady. Pull up a spot to <laughs> sleep, y'all. <laughs> There's plenty of room. I, uh, seeing that, I actually grab my bedroll and I, I hand it to Riala. <laughs> 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 just, I don't, I, I don't know. I uh, mean, maybe that's your thing, but just in case. Pe Pe Peter, Peter walked in. Peter walked in on spinning bed and says that it was amazing <laughs> to come into that on. See, I was thinking if I sleep with my armor on. It might like oil it overnight if I sleep near him. You know, you know what? what yeah, it would get rid of those pesky squeaks. You know, yeah. go ahead, go for it. <laughs> I I have heard other excuses to share a bed with a satyr. <laughs> go go for uh, it. <laughs> I mean, I will say that if 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 the bard it was not up to the the drinking ability that she professes, it's quite possible that maybe Sledge isn't up to the. Uh, the prowess that he professes either. So I don't know that I would be too worried. This is not a the, family is, stream, but it's also not a, a, a horrific stream. So. There is zero evidence to what you are saying or you know not what? saying. It, it okay. happens to all wizards. Sometimes you just run out of spell slots. It's, all right, what's the watch <laughs> order, please? <laughs> um, I'm going to assume that Aerith and Gen are probably going to split in two, and then I assume uh, Raven is probably Raven can either join one, one or one yeah. or the other. Um, but I imagine Gen and Aerith kind of trust each other to, to protect the other one, so they probably would do it separately. Makes sense so to me. Okay. Maybe Aerith watches first, and then Gen watches second. Okay. And then Raven sure. can join if he wants, or he can do whatever she. he likes. She, she, she. <laughs> she. <laughs> Raven, where would you like to be in the watch rotation? So I'll normally do three, but you, you are elves, so technically we could get by with just two. Um, Sorry, I, I've no, played no, no, in a fine. game with a raven before, and mm -hmm. it was a male, so every time I say raven, I instantly <laughs> think of <laughs> mm. uh, Anytime I, I would mention raven, you know, beyond just thinking of this character, I just think of Teen Titans. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, where do you want to but, be uh, in the... In the... Um... Actually, what I can do, since yay sleep rolls, uh, I'll I'll split the difference between the two of them. Be able to like half half on both of them. That sounds good. Uh, all right, so then we will proceed into watches. No one take your rest just yet. Let's make sure we get through the watches. So and Sledge can have his owl, you know, constantly helping also if need be. True. True. 
All right, Sledge. Hey, Absraham knows nothing but working out and watching my back. So yes. Well, you're leaning uh, on your back. <laughs> well, I thought you said that he knows how to spot. Like um, he does. He 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 spots things. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, so can i have Aerith and raven uh both roll a perception check please all right all right oh oh not 20 Ooh. i see everything 19 so with a 19 and a 25 uh you have both stayed in in a number of taverns and inns over the years too many to count in fact and you know e even being in in tiny hut it, it, it makes things more comfortable and and a little bit quieter but uh, this is like the quietest small townest place you've ever slept i mean even in the woods you have the kind of noises of the critters and stuff and it is it is just this is a completely unremarkable unexceptional place that you're sleeping uh you don't don't really hear anyone cleaning up downstairs. You don't hear the noise of creatures outside. You don't see torch lights kind of out the window or anything. It is just perfectly dead still and silent. And the first watch goes off without uh, without any, any going trouble. On. As it was going on, uh, then help me her watch. I want to uh, Aerith, by the way, uh, a little something that uh, we picked up is better than the swill that we found here. And I break out one of the extra bottles of fine whiskey that we had gotten from a place somewhere. <laughs> it was from Candlekeep. <laughs> That's... It even That's says true. candle keep on the side. He's like, I don't know where we got this. <laughs> He's trying what to scrub it, it off. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> somebody stuck this on here. I don't, I don't, I don't know where, where this happened. Uh, yeah. And so if, if you choose to partake in it, it is, it is delicious. It is very fine, very fine whiskey. Uh, Aerith would not drink it right now because she's on watch. Um, but she would definitely keep it. Um, Don't worry, I can stop the effects if you drink too much, if you want to have some now. Oh, go on <laughs> then. Go on. <laughs> no, just a cheeky, cheeky, cheeky one. She says she'll have a cheeky one, and then after a few, she probably needs your assistance in, <laughs> in getting rid of the drunk effect. She's there like, so those manacles, right? I wonder if she's used them on anyone before, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and no, the, uh, it, it, it's, it's not like it's overproofed or anything. It is just, it's very nice. It just, it kind of rolls the edge off. And even with the edge rolled off, I mean, it's, it, it, there's nothing, uh, nothing going on. Not even the rent in this town. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So any. Uh, so you guys have a have a little drink. He. Uh, she's able to. Uh, Raven is able to clear up the deleterious effects. Uh... Aerith also kind of um, after that happens, um, Aerith will actually probably sit closer to Raven, almost as if like after Raven did that for her, she trusts Raven more. Hmm. Nice. And Very nice. Now seems to be a lot more. I would say you finally. She seems like as relaxed as you could possibly imagine Aerith being. Like she, she seems a lot more laid back with you now. Mm -hmm. I, I think with with that being done, then I would say something. As I, I slowly try to put an arm around you to, like, to comfort you, but like you know, trying to read you so see if that would be you know too far for you. But, well, for, uh, for, for a cuddle. I mean, it was like, you know, just put like one, one arm like around you. Okay, like, you got know. you, got you, got you. I mean, won't go much further now unless it seems things better. Um, you, you kind of remind me of a, of a friend of mine that I, I well, friend, protege. Uh, you, you have a bunch of demeanors that are just like her. And I mean, other than not having, well, you don't have red eyes like her, but uh, you, you, and and to some degree, your brother both 
kind of have aspects that remind me of her. Uh, hmm. And perhaps one day you can meet up with my friend. She, well, she she went off on a little little adventure of her own last I saw her a few years back. But you might you might like it, Naris. Hmm. I'd like to meet her. Hashtag crossover. <laughs> um, all right, so your your watch uh, goes off without a hitch. Um, the uh, and so now we're we're transitioning. There's a moment where the three of you uh, again, and Raven and Aerith are all awake as, as Aerith as you're passing the watch uh, to Gen. Gen to catch up. Everything's fine. Nothing happened. Whiskey is good, and me and Raven are like best buds now. So enjoy and then mm. she'll just kind of wrap a blanket and then just go like go to sleep she taught me six new ways to use manacles oh wait no, I, wait, I, I, uh, uh, it. Uh, damn it i mean uh <laughs> six new manacles. ways to kill a manticore i mean <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to hear any more about it <laughs> so once once she's asleep, uh, Gen will turn to Raven. So, you must tell me how you got my sister to drink whiskey on watch. She's usually so, so tight. Well, you know, when you don't have to worry about the effects of it afterwards, it kind of helps. And plus, she seemed to be the type that needed uh, some extra calming of her nerves. She seemed a little anxious from uh, today. I mean, if you want to also be cleansed by the, the light that I can use, I can also have a few drinks with you. I'll never say no to a few drinks, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I will ask, do you like to play cards? And he pulls out his deck. <laughs> well... He I'm pulls out his deck, you say, sorry. <laughs> and Sledge sits up, bolt right up in bed, and so does Narcissus. Um, hello? Uh, uh. Yes, I have VIP passes to this party. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, please continue. I'm, I'm 13 at mm -hmm. heart, so. Well, I am not the good at it, but I do not mind playing a friendly game. Um, perhaps we can talk about the things while we're playing and drinking. Perhaps we could. Mm -hmm. What's on your mind? Uh, you, you just see as like Raven's head just turns towards the half good name, half narcissus uh, passed out over there she she has has pretty well completely like 99 and a half percent turned back into the narcissus that you're familiar with the the um the leon good name sections have kind of gone away because that one over there has, has been quite an enigma uh does not seem to be Changing her appearance via illusions. No, indeed not. What do you think she is? Uh, well, one of the things which I uh, asked you to ask about if, the, if Rene had long arms was a uh, creature that I actually met a, well, met slash fought it had a it has a sibling also it will, that both got dispatched of were I do believe they're called doppelgangers. They uh, are gray skinned with long arms and can take the appearance of other people. I've heard tell of such creatures. Never met one. Didn't seem that Renee was one though. Well, there are other gray skin things. I mean, how it could also be uh, one, one of the dwarves from, from the Undermountains. 
could be Sorin, but uh, the description made him sound so odd. Mm -hmm. If I was Sorin trying to disguise myself, I might go for something less noticeable. Well, I think did they did uh, not did they not say through from what the rest of the, the other members had talked to them that the uh, this Rene was actually here for probably longer than than a day. So since we have the idea that the time here to outside, uh, Soren would not have had that much time to go and do all this. Hmm. So the question is, who are we dealing with? And what do they want? Uh, I mean, perhaps they, they just want control of this place if they got stuck in here by accident or came here of their own, of its own Felicia, wherever it or him or her is. Hmm. Though that, that, uh, and I, I presume you had relayed the information about like the, uh, oh, always been, the thing was always seeing everything kind of. Yeah. Oh. So I always uh, seem to be looking at it. I mean, to me, that makes me think of a few different things. Like, Perhaps the person was always on edge, like always edgy around, like, like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Or what if it was, um, and I transform my, uh, my clothing so that it now takes on the appearance of a robe of many eyes? I mean, he could have been wearing one of these, but one that actually worked in comparison. Right now, this only does the facade. I will confess, I don't know what that is. Well, normally, and I poke on the eyes, uh, <laughs> uh, these would actually be, well, they would actually blink and move, whereas this can somewhat replicate some of that, but they don't all work as it actually does. Hmm. So, I have many thoughts, just like I have many thoughts as to what, what, uh, what or who uh, she really is. Uh, I mean, as of right now, I know we, as we've talked, there is many secrets that everybody has, but you know, some maybe deeper than others. Well, everyone has secrets. That's why I make a point of mm. not trusting anyone, except one. Yeah, I, I look over at, at your sister, I presume. That's right. Mm -hmm. And for shits and giggles, I like to think this is all just going on, going on your telepathy radio, just mm -hmm. in case if you ever get yeah. spied on. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just in our heads. <laughs> well, even though we all have secrets, just know that uh, you know some of us are uh, more willing to help than you can see behind the shell of a mask. Excellent. I, I'm sorry. I I, I I anticipated you being done. I, I apologies. No, yeah, yeah. no, mm -hmm. we're we're probably done. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Can both of you roll a perception for me? Can do. Uh, only a twelve. Are you not going to sleep or even just well, out of curiosity? I, 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 I split. I was splitting a shift, so two hours in one, two hours in the other. <gasps> My mistake. Sorry. Got yeah. To so I, I I had gotten part of my sleep that I needed to get done, and I'm continuing the rest of it. Plus, um, he's a monk. <laughs> Twenty-five. Yeah. Again, um, it mm. is it, it is just even. Would you say Raven? You had a nineteen. 
Uh, no, I only had a 12 this time. I rolled 12. One. Um, uh, you know, even, even still, and, and with, with, um, Gin's 25, they, it's, it's again, it's completely peaceful. I mean, almost so peaceful that it's eerie. Um, and, uh, but there's, again, there's nothing to, to make you think that anything funky is going on. It's just silent and, and quiet. So things that you probably prayed for a million times on other nights, they're just kind of all, all coming true all at once. So, um, so you will, um, sorry, to get a mute discord here. Um, and I, was, I was just gonna say one one thing before my character uh, finished the rest of the trance. Mm -hmm. and, this, and speaking of secrets, this, if you may, if, uh, in case you're you get wondering, could you please not uh, remove my mask? It's kind of part of my tradition. So please leave it be. In case you get, you know, one curious. Very well. You have my word. It'd be a crazy way to destroy trust with your party. <laughs> Sorry, right, she's right? asleep. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, the, the next couple of hours, again, go by... It, uneventful um, and, and as you're kind of closing in toward the end of it it just everything just everything everywhere the the inside the tiny hut outside in the room that you can see even the, the little bit of torch light outside everything just gets a little dimmer and a little dimmer and a little dimmer and you and you kind of shake shake your eyes a little bit and nothing's wrong with your eyes. You can still fully see, but everything is just a little dimmer and a little dimmer and a little dimmer. And then suddenly all five of you are awake together, not in the hut, not in the inn, you are in what seems like a very, very dimly lit cave. Um, solid wall behind you. Corridor continuing in front of you. Um, well, I am generally a heavy sleeper. <laughs> um... I don't remember falling asleep in a cave. Uh, what what happened? I, Riala and I were sleeping very well. Uh, what happened? Uh, DM, I was awake for this weird transition, wasn't I? It just got darker, it just and, got darker got and darker and darker and darker and darker. And you were you were like, "Oh, what's wrong with my eyes?" and you closed them, and when you shook off and opened one time, you're all there together in a different location. We were teleported here. Roll an arcana check. Um, uh, I'm sorry, your actual name's up on my screen. Uh, Sledge. How could I forget Sledge? My my actual name is Sledge. I, uh... I, I mean, your Zoom name. I almost called you out on that. Um <gasps> Well, you're doing things right if you forgot Sledge. I mean, um... <laughs> uh, 18. It, um... It could be a teleport, but it is not... It is not a teleport that you're you're experienced with. If it is a teleport that has brought you here, it is not one that you've ever experienced. And... <clears throat> Even with, and obviously the tiny hut is no longer. Yep, gone. Gone. The room is gone. Like everything. It's just the five of you. Uh, ooh. Uh, looking like on the ground itself, mm -hmm. um, is there any markings or anything like that? There's not. 
there's not a whole lot of ways to to break into a into my private sanctum here and sledge kind of looks down but there is one and uh is there anything on the ground there that uh might have gotten through say a tiny hut uh <laughs> It uh, it, it's it seems like um, that that it is a, a a rock kind of rough hewn rock floor looking like the rest of the cave looks like. I mean, there you don't see any thing under you. It just seems as though that you're all standing together in a new location. And there's a cat apparently. Now you said the five of us. Does that mean that Narcissus is not here? Correct. Mm. Uh, brother, what happened? Got darker, darker, and then suddenly I blinked, and here we are. That's called sleep again. <laughs> it was not sleep. You know as well as I do, we can't be put to sleep. We I meant more that like you, you fell asleep, but... Nonsense. I got plenty of rest. There's some magic at work here. If only we had a way to detect it. Sledge mm -hmm. continues to look at the ground. <laughs> no, oh wait, uh, I feel like that might have been directed towards me. Uh, <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, Sledge does, in fact, uh, have detect magic. My only fear uh, is, as with the demiplane, everything might get very... Very bright. There might be a lot of magical things here, but um, Sledge will begin to sort of start like rubbing his uh, temples and he's okay. Uh, sorry, this is this is way more mental lifting so you don't get to see me flex. Apologies. Um, and he, you know, continues to focus and will cast uh, detect magic. Um, You're going to hard cast it? I am. Okay. Uh, you notice the magical items that you and your party have on you, on your, on your person. Um, but you, the, the cave does not seem as though it is magical, uh, nor do there seem to be any other magical things around you. Only what, only your equipment that 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 is magical. And that lasts for ten minutes. It right? does. Okay. It does. I will uh, make note of that and let you know if things change. Um, I will relay that. Well, we are quite the bright group, uh, magically speaking. Uh, but everything else seems, well, pretty mundane. Um, if we want to continue forward, I, I can see through this site for, for a little while. Uh, maybe gives us a, a direction further up. And we are against a wall, right? Like there is no... Yeah, the, you, oh, no. you could not turn around and go back. You can only go forward from where you are. And that wall isn't emanating any... Okay. Nada. Um, I think at that point, uh, Sledge will kind of look uh, at each of the group members, sort of almost mentally taking note <laughs> of you know all these bright spots that they have on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> gonna steal that. Gonna <laughs> steal that. Steal gonna steal that. that. Oh, I don't have one of those. Um, and. Uh, uh, shall we? And we'll start kind of taking a tentative couple of steps forward. Okay. Yeah. It. Um... You want to take time to prepare. <laughs> well, I don't even know mechanically uh, if we've gotten a long rest. So you I... you have you have not currently gotten a long rest, which is why okay. I told you to not, because I thought this might happen. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so you guys are going to continue down the hall a bit, very What's slowly. Up to the group now. So just to, I mean, we, we didn't get a long rest. Not yet. Mm -hmm. I presume else? the only person who did was Gen. 
No one has gotten the benefit of a long rest just yet. No, I'm saying oh, really? Gen had his long rest and then took his watch. Yeah, yeah, because he only needed four hours. hours. So Gen is the only one to have had a long rest. I would say that no one has gotten the benefit of a long rest just yet. Okay. Hmm. Ah. a short? Don't, don't worry. I'm not. I'm not going to kill you. You can oh, live. Yeah. You can live with just one arm. <laughs> I'll beat you with the other one. <laughs> um. So you guys gonna hang out here? You gonna get? I'll hang out here till next week. I mean, it don't matter to me. All right. Y'all gonna Let's continue on a little? Yep. Okay. The um, the the cave, the, the cavern, the 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 tunnel seems dimly lit. Um, it, it's kind of up where you are and hitting in. There there aren't. There seems to be no detritus, no no rock, no bits of rock or anything. It's just kind of roughly hewn, and you. You go along, you know, 20, 30 feet, and you stop and look back, and the corridor ends behind you, like 15 feet behind where you are. So the the further you go, it seems that there is no way to return where you were. But if where you were didn't lead anywhere, then there's no point in going back there. Uh, do you guys want to press? And it is a solid wall like sure you, i mean you, you can oh yeah yeah, yeah. when you it. when you push against it i mean you can have someone take out a sword and strike it uh, if you'd like hmm i can whack it with my hammer yeah give it a go roll it up it has a low ac it's a wall um yeah you hit uh it, <laughs> it, AC of a wall. it uh it, it feels just like every other time that you have whiffed and and cracked into a stone wall before i mean it feels absolutely <sighs> solid yeah it's it's solid yeah mm -hmm. can i try and can we see anything up uh the 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 top of the tunnel that you're in is yeah maybe two or three feet above your head okay, it, it is so it... it is just in a kind of a bore almost Okay. So it's not like I can jump over it, you know? <laughs> oh, cor correct. I mean, you could you could have someone boost you up and see if the top is solid. Um again, grabby yep. hands. <laughs> <laughs> grabby, grabby. Help me. Lift. Why do you need me to help? Can you just jump? Well, I don't want to use my sonic jump and then hit my head on the ceiling. Uh, I want to do that once I can. If there is a gap, then I'll right, do that. Right. But if there's not, I don't want to just bash my head. Come on, then. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm like, jeez. <laughs> just just gets get, assumes position to boost her up. You know, kneels and puts his hands out for her to step on. Okay. Would that be like I'm, acrobatics? Uh, I'm yes. Just to make sure that she doesn't fall backwards. Thank you. And That's a twenty-seven. Use... What athletics for me? Uh, uh you know, you she she rolled a twenty seven. That's uh, okay. that's, that's that'll cover all of you. Good yeah, you uh, you're you're boosted up and and your hands hit, and you're able to kind of feel all around, and it it feels just as solid as the walls and the floor. It's solid, guys. It's solid. Just a quick timeout. I'm really angry because I did this to my players two weeks ago, and I was like. <laughs> And I don't like how it feels to be on the other side. <laughs> oh, I have, tables have turned. I haven't even done anything to anyone yet. I'm just <laughs> mad about it. <laughs> I'm. Uh, it's okay. Well, I, 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 we all need to be salty about stuff at some point. Uh, uh, press. Well, there's really only one way to go. That way, and I can imagine Sledge is probably still facing the wall, and he's like. It's like, Damn. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, you guys start to to press a little further in. Again, it's very dimly lit. Um, can everyone roll a perception for me, please? Once again, the elves all have probably dark vision. Uh, yes, that's true. And so you can see the the elves can see the full the full sixty feet, uh, but the the ones without dark vision can also see to sixty feet. Okay. So an 11, a 17, a 20. 15. A 15. 
Uh, oh, and, uh, and a nine. Sorry, I didn't see. I I, I, I screwed up my perception roll because I didn't see that one. <laughs> perception. Um, again, you notice that that up ahead, just kind of at the range of your dark vision, there are what look like bodies on the floor. Is anything lighting up on them magically? Well, you don't see them yet. Okay. They're at the other corpses ahead. Well, or they're unconscious. How many? Uh, How many you, you you can just see uh, like like two or three at the edge of the site. If you if you move up, kind of slowly a little bit, just taking stock. Mm -hmm. There are, I don't know. It looks like maybe ten or fifteen, like all in all. A lot. 10, 15, maybe. Wherever we are, it was the scene of a massacre. What are they wearing? Do they look like they're from Candlekeep? Hmm. So you guys are all starting to move in close enough that you can, you can see the bodies. You, he's inched up a little to see that. So you guys can start to see them as well. Remember, the dark vision gives you kind of gray tones... So to, to get more information on that, you'll have to get a little closer. Uh, yes. Nice stuff up there. I am concerned get about getting closer. Closer. Yeah. Yes, you you're, certainly you're, you're on the same page. You certainly <laughs> may. I will be I will be holding a sledge uh, yell for if I see something uh, magical on said bodies. Okay. So again, you have, you have you have successfully stealth with a twenty six. Which is funny because there is absolutely nothing to hide behind, but you're just, you're being, you're against the, the wall, cave. you're against the wall, you're fleet of foot, uh, 32 on stealth for Raven. Yeah, you, you two are like creeping death, just coming, going along the walls, um, and you, you don't see any movement up where the bodies are. Um, they, they seem to just be there still, and it is, it is quiet in here. Much like the noise that dead bodies make. Look, I want to investigate these bodies if I could. Okay. Uh, are you, are, is everyone else following up, or is it just the the two of you for the moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, Sledge would be would be m moving forward as soon as he said uh, there were bodies. He would probably stop once again, just in the the idea that. Um, uh, waiting on the mental all clear, I suppose, mm -hmm. uh, from from Gen. I I'd stick with Gen. Okay. Real is hanging back a little bit just because she's not super stealthy. So. But your armor is all like... oiled up from. Uh, you don't, you being... don't have to... I'm shiny. Okay, I mean, Sledge <laughs> is back here. You're back here. I... <laughs> you, you you guys have never seen like dark vision reflection off of something. <laughs> Yet Riala's armor is like a dark vision mirror now. Yeah. Um, so as, as you begin to get closer, and, and especially Gen and Raven, who are just kind of right on top of them, um, the, the, the bodies that are nearest to you, they look a lot like the town folk. Like you see someone who is like, ah, oh God, that, that is, that's got to be Ulrich. And other names... Um, you see, Trina. uh, you see, you see, you see Trina, you see Henrietta and Josephus, Evie um, and Daphne, uh, Evie and Daphne, uh, Mickey? even Mickey, uh, the, <gasps> Mickey? like, abs absolutely like these, as you, as you're there and you start looking, these are the bodies of, of the townsfolk. Um, and if you're up there where you can really see that, I'd like everyone to make an investigation, please. Yeah, I want to make an investigation and see what happened to them. Do, do you guys say anything about this? Like, you know, oh, these are the townsfolk or... Yeah, I probably <laughs> would. Anybody else going to go up and investigate? So I've got um... Gen at 23... I rolled a dirty 20. Um, there don't, and, and 21 for uh, Sledge, and 18 for Aerith. You don't see any 
wounds. You don't see any blood. Uh, what you do see is the bodies seem... They seem less than lifelike. If you had to guess, and especially Gen with with the twenty three would 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 be maybe be the first one to say. They almost look like they're made out of wood. Like the the body would be made of wood and then dressed in, in like a clothing. And and even if you look at that, it's like what's well, kind of half clothing and half kind of painted to look that way. No, I said it earlier, but I'd like to reiterate. I don't think the townspeople are people. Seeing, seeing this here, do you think that they are all uh, uh, simply marionettes, or are they um, have they been replaced? Mm. I think they're illusions. I think they're part of huh. Quill's prison. Like I, well, like I said before, I, I believe that these were just uh, more of the people slash jailers to help keep him happy and content with inside this place. I've met Mickey before outside of this demiplane. He, he's a person. He exists. And it, I was did thinking he seem that to know you? This version didn't. He didn't remember me. Well, what if these are all just facsimiles of real people? That's what I was thinking, like copies. But why two copies? Why one Yeah, I don't here? know what that has to do with these wooden things. And one out there. Unless... Maybe that's what Soren was doing in the time that we were still in Candlekeep. Maybe he was replacing out said people. Um, I don't know how, but... Would this be the repository for those of the town from when nobody of that is real is around? So you just end up back here. But we never really checked this to see if people in the town, you know, while I'm looking down in, at these bodies, uh, were, uh, you know, how physical they were as far as, like, if they were, well, wooden as kind of... You don't think you would have noticed if we were talking to a wooden puppet? Have you looked through, the, you know, a lot of uh, illusions or things that can change shape and form? Would you be able to tell a difference all the time? This is creepy. I suppose when the Harpers, that's, that's a good question. This Mickey fellow, I, well, I don't know him nearly as well as, as you do there. I mean, I don't know him well, but I've interacted with him before. I know he exists in Candlekeep. Does he... Does he have any particular affiliations? Um, earlier, of course, we found these Harper badges, and Harpers are obviously involved in this demiplane. Um, I'm just trying to think of where they would get the material. Well, how would it be that Mickey would end up here? I don't know. He's not very bright. Maybe come on just... now. Come on. <laughs> You don't know that. He just smokes a lot of Shaka, weed. Bro. He Shaka. just smokes Riala. a lot of weed. Riala, do you happen to know if he had lived in this place when it actually existed before it, it had its collapse? No, I, I don't know that much about him. I just know that he sells alcohol and does the drugs. Mm-hmm. In that order. Um, <laughs> and, uh, not so, that good anyways. <laughs> yeah, and if, his, his bear's not great either. No. If, uh, if these people, 
Well, I suppose my question becomes, if this was supposed to be a jail sale or, or a place for Quill to be held until they could figure out a way to... Yeah, I, I would say I don't think it is a prison necessarily. I think it's more meant to be a safe space for him because he was getting out of control. So they just needed somewhere to contain him. But I don't think they, I don't think it's like a prison, like maliciously, you know what I mean? Like, if, if they're mm -hmm. assuming that they wanted this, uh, a place for him to feel comfortable. Right, so that he wouldn't get suspicious and try to leave. Perhaps all these, uh, these characters, these these uh, marionettes, as they were, are people that he knew, that he was comfortable with, that he would would relate to this place, this wisteria, uh, uh, wisteria Vale. Um, I like where you're going with this. I, I like that you're finally coming upon my, my thought process from yesterday afternoon when we first arrived here. Riala, remember? Yeah. I, I look at that sledge. <laughs> Riala, remember? Act one of the play. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. I, I just remembered something. <laughs> Divine intervention. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so so in the play, um, Vargan, that's that's who the play is about. That's Quill, I think. Um, he grew up in Wisteria Vale. That's where that was his childhood home. And he, he was happy there. Um, that was when he was good. That was before he was ever corrupted. Um, he lived a, a peaceful, happy life when he was a kid. Um, it wasn't until he got older that um, the, the bad guy, the bad lord, um, he came to Wisteria Vale. And um, the people, I guess, weren't nice enough to him. And he burned the village. And that was sort of what sent Vargon slash Quill on his initial like rampage he wanted to get revenge on this lord who came to his town and basically destroyed it um and do you think we're stuck in a loop then that he's like reliving it mm. like over and over again like the, the the day begins nice and then it gets destroyed and then it begins nice and then it gets destroyed and then it begins nice and it gets destroyed because they look like dummies yeah, I, like I wooden don't... training dummies. Yes, possibly because that might just keep Quill distracted. Mm -hmm. Although maybe they were just trying to keep it to the nice part, so that he wouldn't get upset because he's very powerful now. They probably did, and then Soren maybe came in and keeps killing them to stop him to try and get him to be bad. Right, because Soren could be basically the lord in the play, the bad guy who comes mm -hmm. and destroys the village. I thought that was technically going to be referencing the Rene, whatever that, that per thing, person, whatever it is, because Soren's only been here now for well, a little bit longer than us, which only took us a little, like maybe an hour after, so he had like three, four hours being here prior to the group of us entering. So a lot of this is True. hypothetical. Or Rene could be the bad lord who comes mm -hmm. in every time. But I'm wondering if if Quill wasn't starting to catch on to what was happening. I mean, we've seen like the trees and the color changes and things like that. May maybe that's why he he's disappeared. Maybe he's starting to put things together. Exactly. We're, we're talking about a, a, a very, uh, well, dangerous enough person that an entire organization wanted to try to find a way to to cure him before releasing him as i look around if well if you wake up every day and uh you're intelligent like he is yeah i could see you begin to realize that maybe things are a little too perfect and maybe Maybe as as good as this feeling is, it's uh, not real. Maybe he started to to realize that himself. And Soren is doing nothing more than than waiting for the key to get him out, whatever that is. Though I kind of fear it might be the dagger. Yeah, I think I think the key is the dagger. Um, the the amethyst dagger is supposed to be able to cure the curse. The question is, what are Soren's motives? Why is he here? Does he 
want to help Quill or does he want to hurt Quill? Because there's only two options to get Quill out. Kill him, save him. And we don't know which one Soren wants to do. I think he wants some allied because from what we heard, he did have a lot of power behind him. And also, he, from what well, it sounds like also, that he's a one of quite good with words. So maybe working together, they'd be able to, well, uproot and destroy some of the things that were either Harper and or Zentarum related. Yes, if Soren could get to Quill and show him what they've done to him and how they've trapped him, he might be able to persuade him to join his side. And I suppose I'd have to follow up with how did Soren know that that n- now well, have the issues with this uh, demiplane been occurring before Soren arrived or after he arrived? Obviously, thinking if the problems existed before, maybe Soren is doing Sorin is doing nothing more than jumping in on an opportunity to help his friend. Or, or how long was it between when you saw Soren and his group go into the book before you guys went in? Uh, probably about two hours, right? About an hour and a half, roughly. Yeah, before, hour, hour, so and half, hour and a half, two hours, somewhere in there. Yeah, so then like four or five hours, uh, you know, out, outside, I guess, by the way you said the time changed. So, would so not, he doesn't have from, much of a head start on you then. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. No, with the exception that time is a little different here. One hour for... Candle keep, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, buddy. Uh, is more like four to five hours. It's it's a, a little over three hours. Gotcha, gotcha. So because, because a, an even number would be difficult. So, uh, so we can uh, assume he has about a six hour head start and sort of looking around at all the bodies and and this tunnel we're in and. That does seem like an awful lot to accomplish in in just six in, hours. So that's a short amount of time. I think your math might be a little off. It's time moves faster outside than inside. No, so time we moves two, slower outside. You were four oh. hours out there before you came I'm sorry, in. I'm we sorry. Did one I'm, hour yeah. inside. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's been like twenty minutes. He had in in the book before we got here. That, that, that yeah, yes, yeah. that that's right. That is that is right. So mm-hmm. if it was yeah. two hours in Candlekeep. He probably like a half has, hour, maybe. Yeah, maybe as much as forty-five minutes. Mm-hmm. But I will oh, say yeah. that that I mean, you guys could kill mm-hmm. fifteen people in forty-five minutes. So, like forty-five <laughs> seconds. <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, as uh, as you guys have been discussing this, um, everybody, give me another perception roll, please. Well, <laughs> not 20. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. So you guys are, 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 are talking. Let's see. I'm still missing. What? Oh, you, yeah. You said you had a 12. Um, you guys are talking. You're, you're kind of going through the plans and Aerith and Raven and Gen realize that the kind of confined tunnel that you were in like you guys have been talking and kind of looking at the bodies the tunnel is now a large room and so the five of you are still there the bodies are still at your feet but it's it's no longer a tunnel it's a room and just up ahead there's something kind of in the middle of the room floating there <clears throat> is a large orb of flesh with several fleshy short tentacles sprouting from it, each with an eye at the end of it. The eyelids are closed sleepily as if they're dozing. And I mm-hmm. will give everyone one action. Sledge, what's your action? 
I have no idea where we are, right? Okay. Um, I will let me double check something real quick. It is fourth. It's a help. I was doing the same thing as you were doing there a second ago. <laughs> Holding my a finger up to where my mouth would be. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't think, uh, I do apologize on this guys upcasting. Um, that's what I'm trying to read right here. Uh, invisibility doesn't uh, get any more people in it. Does it? It, it, nope. does. it does. Oh, does it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every level above it gets an additional person. Okay. Ooh, good. Good choice. Yes. Um, so that, uh, let's see, that is originally a second level, right? Um, yes. Uh, let's see. Um, you have to have up, any... upcast it to six. Yeah. Uh, so knowing that uh, Raven um, is uh, super duper crazy sneaky, um as as almost like a reaction uh sledge reaches out and the the dung bell sort of comes up <clears throat> and he goes even i know when someone bench presses more than i do and he kind of claps and the uh great or i'm sorry invisibility washes over himself uh uh riala Aerith, and gen one, two, three, four. That's a fifth level spell slot. Um, Raven, you're sneaky. Um, and <laughs> I believe it is. Gen actually has a reliable talent. <laughs> that is my yeah. action. That All is right. I have reliable talent and side powered neck. Mm -hmm. Riala. I bless the elves. Okay. Uh, your invisibility drops because you cast a spell. Oh. Damn. Raven. You look good blessing. <laughs> uh, so you bless the elves. Okay. So that means that the three of them now have bless. Okay. Raven, your action. That worked out well. That worked out well. Could not have no, gone better. I know I meant the three elves. No, the three elves. I like that. You can just say I'm blessing the elves and it's three of them. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. So I just look at at the area where uh, Sledge was, I'm just like, lightly was like mutter. Uh, oh, actually, I did bounce it off of Gen because I probably have like an, maybe less than an hour on his uh, his switchboard from from the uh, night prior, and like, man, too bad he didn't do the, uh, the you know sauna without trace. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I will. Uh, and start doing some unique sneakiness so as uh, not to cause any loud noises to wake up this floating mass. Okay. Fuck. So roll a stealth check. Uh. Mm hmm. All right. That's a good one. It's 16 on the die, so 29. Awesome. You are in the middle of nothing except for the corpses, the wooden corpses below you. You are hidden you'd like turn blade on to it and like close your eyes and you're hidden uh Aerith, you are so blessed and invisible i'm blessed and invisible i don't want to lose my invisibility so i'm not going to do anything i'm okay. just going to ready uh ready an action in case it comes towards me but i'm trying to just be stealthy with the invisibility okay uh again Right. Uh, I too don't want to disturb anything. Just going to take advantage of the visibility. I will try Let's and stealth. from my mistakes. <laughs> I will try and stealth past this beholder, though. To where will you try to stealth? You you guys okay. are basically it... in a in a. I'm, I just hit my mic, and I'm sorry for anyone's <laughs> ears that that got loud on. You're basically in kind of an oval room. Okay. With from what you can see. No entrance or exit. You cannot go back the no, way you came. No entrance or exit. Yeah, the way that you came is no more, and there seems to be no more tunnel in front of you. Is there? Is there any way up? 
Uh, no, the ceiling is higher in the middle, right, right over where he is or she. I'm not mm -hmm. one to judge. Um, but um, uh, but but it's not appreciably higher. So there's nowhere to go. Um, right. I am. While I do still have a little bit of telepathy left, I am going to talk to everyone. Uh, there's no way out. What's the plan? Try and kill it. Um, All right, so my... that, so, uh, so him, him, him asking that question is going to be uh, what he can get off before we do the next thing, which is the the eyes on the tentacle, the tentacles snap open and look directly over in the area where you are, and they're kind of taking it all in. <clears throat> a large eye in the center of the body slowly opens and looks over to see Riala. And then suddenly your other friends that had invisibility, they are fully visible. His and lips... His lips begin to, to part in just the most sickening grin. And the mouth opens, and there's just a mouth full of sharp, sharp teeth. It continues to pull more into a grin. And then the eye stalks, each in turn, fire toward you guys. And I need everybody to make a dexterity save, please. But I don't wanna. Mm -hmm. That's only a fifteen. Let's see Me if and Sledge to... are like, uh oh. Let's see if I really don't to wanna. Because I think a fifteen is probably not gonna cut it. Facing a beholder. Let's see. <laughs> Sledge is good. I'll take it, bro. No, I won't. <laughs> now, what is what is what can I use that bless for? Uh, well, right it's now, really gone. It is. It it's is. Cur it is currently <laughs> it's, in it's suppressed. It's currently inactive. Yeah. Let's say that. Yep. Okay. Um, that is a twenty-seven. Forget and... it. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use my inspiration to try and reroll my save. Okay, Riala, oh, what, what was your? Oh yeah. Your save. Yeah. He just said that. I'm like, I should probably use my inspiration. Okay. Too. Uh, I'll. 20, I'll, 20... I'll, I'll I'll allow that if you want to use your inspiration on this, I will allow that. Okay. Yes, 23 please. on the 23 on the deck save. I feel a lot better about that. <laughs> I used my inspiration and got a nat one. <laughs> Me too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Mm. Oh, no. All right, so we're just gonna stick with his nine. Um so we have Aerith at nine and Sledge at nine. What is your actual deck save, Riala? Seven. Seven. Uh, okay. Uh, you hear him begin very slowly in a very bassy uh, voice to start laughing. <laughs> and then there's an echoey voice that it seems to transcend language and it's, it's directly in your mind just like with Gin's telepathy and you hear the word Renicor and an eye stalk fires singularly at Riala and then boom you are all back in the inn Tiny Hut is gone if you look Outside, it seems like you're, I mean, the sun is up. It is probably later than you think it is. You hear a knock on the door. I'm going to punch you right in your eye. Oh, yeah. uh, wait. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Y'all going to sleep all day in there? You're going to come down and have some lunch. And you, lunch. You, 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 you hear the voice. It's Ulrich. You absolutely hear Ulrich. 
Hey guys, I just need to check. Did anyone else see that giant flesh thing or was that just a dream? I just need to make sure that this is something. It, did you, you had a dream about a giant eyeball thing? Yeah, there was walls around us. There was like these dead puppet things. Of there the was villages. no exit. No exit. Gen tried to help me up. I looked amazing doing it. Then there was a big ball with eyes and tentacles and stuff. And a sledge made us invisible. You blessed us. Did that happen, right? Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, had, I mean, I had the same dream. So either it was a really weird fever dream or something is happening here. Buddy, can I ask one question? Sure. Did, sure. Since I, I sent you a long message, did did Mickey have something upon him? Just so I, I, this is probably my, my next thing I was going to state to go along with this talk. Uh, no, the, in the in all of the investigations, none of the the corpses had any possessions. Not even a gold coin. Nothing. Okay. All of that happened <laughs> except the part about you looking amazing. <laughs> I thought she looked amazing. I looked Both. amazing too. My armor was like glowing. Oh yeah, the bless was just. Your armor is is still. It's not glowing as much, but it's definitely greasy on one side. You, um, you got a you got a tuff of <laughs> hair or fur right there, Riala. Uh, speaking of which, uh, if you guys notice, Sledge, he is he is matte. Like he is not shiny. Don't look at me. Look away. And he quickly grabs a bottle of Sledge Sledge Swoho Serendipitous Salve. Hey, and quickly starts rubbing it on. It acts as mage armor. Um, and uh, that's amazing. There's um, the oil. <sighs> and so while you were all pondering what may or may not have just happened, I would like everybody to credit yourselves with a long rest, complete. And that is where we're going to end the stream for tonight. Ooh. Um, buddy, I was getting some new underwear. Uh, uh, <laughs> was it was it was it a brown pants situation? Uh, it, it, it was. It, I was like, I was like, hey, as long oh as he doesn't open God. his eyes, we'll be fine. Uh, anyway. <laughs>